This is our view of cloud computing. Cloud computing is nothing but on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computer resources like applications, platforms, and infrastructure. Example includes networks, servers, storage, applications, and services. Cloud computing enables access over the internet to shared pool of computer resources. The cloud resources can be accessed by any of the cloud clients like laptops, mobile phones, tablets, desktops, and servers. The benefit of cloud computing is they can be provisioned very quickly and is similar to public utility, always available, reliable, and pay only for what you use. The main enabler behind cloud computing is virtualization. Virtualization software separates physical computing device into one or more virtual devices, each of which can be easily used and managed to perform computing tasks. We have mainly three service models for cloud computing. At infrastructure level, we have infrastructure as service. This includes virtual machines, servers, storage, load balancers, network, etc. The next layer is at platform. It is platform as service pass. This includes execution runtime, database, web server, development tools, etc. And the next level of cloud computing is at application level. It is software as service SaaS. This includes CRM applications like Salesforce, email, virtual desktop, communication, and games, gaming, multiple users playing online games. All these services are accessed by cloud clients like web browser, mobile app, thin client, terminal emulators, and others. This is a base classification. And now we are coming out with service-oriented architectures that says everything is a service. XAS, XAS. We are going to see the comparison of various service models in the coming sessions. We got trusted, proven cloud service providers. They include Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, IBM Cloud, Rackspace, Verizon Cloud, and many others. Cloud computing compares with other models like client server model, grid computing, fork computing, mainframe computer, utility computing, peer to peer computing, green computing, cloud sandbox, and others. Basically, cloud computing is a client server distribution model. Clients access applications and services that are available in the cloud and accessed over the internet. Client server model refers to any distributed applications that distinguishes between service providers and service requesters, which are clients. Cloud computing has various benefits and the main benefits and the characteristics are cost reductions come with just operational expenditure OPEX only with little or nil capital expenditure CAPEX. And the services can be accessed from anywhere without dependence on the location or the devices. Access from anywhere. It enables users to access resources connecting through a web browser over the internet. Cloud is a agile platform and easy to maintain. Multi-tenancy is the main feature of cloud computing. This enables sharing of resources and costs across a large pool of users. This multi-tenancy allows centralization of resources and manage peak load capacity and better utilization and efficiency. Performance of the resources is monitored and consistent in the cloud architectures. Productivity is highly increased as multiple users can work on the same data simultaneously. Cloud computing is highly reliable with the use of multiple redundant sites. This is suitable for business continuity and disaster recovery, BC and DR. Another fantastic feature of cloud computing is scalability and elasticity. The resources can be provisioned on demand in real time. This gives the ability to scale up or scale down as per the dynamic needs of the organization. Another factor of cloud is it's always questioned for its security. 
as the data resides in the cloud with multi-tenant systems shared by multiple users. These service providers have come up with all kinds of security certifications and providing the full control over the infrastructure and offering the near on-premises security in the cloud. Various security methods, features are implemented by the service providers to secure clients' data and provide on-premises equivalent security. One prefers cloud to the on-premises because of these features, enabling strong access methods, encryption methods, Implementing security recommendations can make cloud more secure. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST's definition of cloud computing, identifies five essential characteristics. They are on-demand self-service. This is automatic provisioning capabilities. Broad network access. Capability to access from thin or thick client platforms like mobile phones, tablets, laptops, and workstations. Resource pooling. The resources are pooled and multi-tenant model is used to meet the consumer demand. Rapid elasticity. Elastically scaling up or scaling down the resources as per need. Measured device. This is to optimize the resource usage. Cloud Computing Service Models Infrastructure as Service, IAS. IAS offers physical or virtual machines and other resources in the cloud. A hypervisor such as VMware ASXi or Hyper-V runs the virtual machines as guests. Pool of hypervisors within the cloud operational system can support large number of virtual machines and the ability to scale services up and down according to customers dynamic varying requirements. Cloud users install operating system images and their application software in the cloud infrastructure. IAS offers physical or virtual machines and other resources. A hypervisor runs the virtual machines as guests. In this model, the cloud user patches and maintains the operating system and the application software. Cloud service providers typically build IAS services on a utility computing basis, like pay as you go, pay only for what you use. Platform as a service, PaaS. In this, customers do not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure, including network, servers, operating systems, or storage, but have control over the deployed applications and possibly configuration settings for the application hosting environment. Some examples of PaaS are Oracle Cloud Platform and IBM Bluemix. Software as a service. The examples are Salesforce application, email applications like Gmail. In this, we are not worrying about the infrastructure or the platform, just using the software as an end user. We access the applications in all the service models, web browser, mobile app, thin client, and emulator. The deployment models, the cloud computing types. We have the public cloud, that is external, private, that is internal, and public private, mixture of these two combination. Public service providers like Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, these own and operate the infrastructure at their data center and offer production services like computing, applications hosting, web hosting, storage, and other resources accessible over the internet. Private cloud is cloud infrastructure private to an organization. Private cloud is local and can be accessed over the intranet, whereas public cloud is accessed over the internet. Public cloud weighs over the private cloud in terms of low capex and just opex and security concerns. Hybrid cloud is a combination of private, community cloud and public clouds, offering the benefits of multi-deployment models. In hybrid cloud, an organization may store sensitive client data in-house on a private cloud application 
and interconnect that application to a business intelligence application provided on a public cloud as a software service. This example of hybrid cloud extends the capabilities of an enterprise to deliver a specific business service. And hybrid cloud can also be suitable to meet temporary capacity needs that can't be met by own private cloud. This capability enables hybrid clouds to employ cloud bursting for scaling across the clouds with pay for what is used only. Gartner defines a hybrid cloud server as a cloud computing service that is composed of some combination of private, public, and community cloud services. It allows one to extend either the capacity or the capability of a cloud service by aggregation, integration, or customization with another cloud service. Here there are two terms, cloud architecture and cloud engineering. Cloud architecture is the software systems involved in the delivery of cloud computing using multiple cloud components. Whereas cloud engineering is the application of engineering disciplines to cloud computing. There is a big concern of security and privacy in the cloud. Some of the concerns are the service provider can access the data that is in the cloud, accidentally or deliberately alter or even delete information, share the information with third parties for the purposes of law enforcement even without a notice or a warrant. And some of the countermeasures are the legal aspect we cannot do anything but check the agreements on permissions and policies and encrypt the data to safeguard your organizational debts. Amazon Web Services provides a range of products and services which can be used as building blocks to run sophisticated and scalable applications. With AWS Cloud, you can run your applications, you can operate more securely, save on the cost. All this comes with the scalability, reliability, and performance of the cloud. This is the web page of Amazon Web Services. These are the products that include compute, storage, database, and many other services. There is AWS Marketplace with thousands of software listings from independent software vendors, which can be easily deployed and run on AWS. These are the solutions. We have machine learning, analytics and data lakes, Internet of Things, and all this. The total world is switching towards cloud, and AWS has got a niche place with innovation and technology adoption. AWS is one of the top cloud service providers around the world. These are the AWS products and services. Compute, storage, database, network and content delivery, and all these products for varying needs. Amazon EC3 is the virtual servers in the cloud. These are the cloud solutions by Amazon Web Services. We have solutions by application and by industry. Solutions by application. This handles the demanding requirements for virtually any application. Some of the popular solutions are websites, backup and restore, archiving, DevOps, data lakes, and analytics, and other solutions. AWS is topping with 1 million monthly active customers across every industry. Solutions by industry sector. AWS has the proven capability to meet any specific business needs for scale, operation, security, and compliance. Some of the tailored solutions are for financial services, digital marketing, media and entertainment, gaming, and many other sectors. This is the AWS Cloud Network. The AWS Cloud spans 55 availability zones within 18 geographical regions and one local region around the world. And it announced more coming up. Let us know about regions and zones. AWS regions provide multiple physically separated and isolated availability zones, which are connected with low latency, high throughput, and highly redundant networking. US East is the region, and these are the availability zones under US East. These availability zones offer AWS customers 
an easier and more effective way to design and operate applications and databases, making them more highly available, fault-tolerant, and scalable than traditional single data center infrastructures or multi-data center infrastructures. One of the characteristics of AWS Cloud is high availability. This high availability is achieved by having multiple availability zones and data center in every AWS region. Applications can be deployed across multiple availability zones in the same region for fault tolerance and low latency. Automatic failover happens between availability zones without interruption. Availability zones are connected to each other with fast private fiber optic networking. Applications and data is replicated across multiple data centers in the same region using availability zones. You can also choose to increase redundancy and fault tolerance further by replicating data between geographic regions. You retain complete control and ownership over the region in which your data is physically located, making it easy to meet region complaints and data residency requirements. The flagship product of Amazon Web Services under compute is Amazon EC2. These are virtual servers in the cloud. Next important product under storage is Amazon S3. Scalable storage in the cloud. We have Amazon EBS that is block storage for EC2 and other products. Under database we have these products. Amazon RDS which is managed relational database services for MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, SQL Server, and MariaDB. And Amazon DynamoDB is managed NoSQL database. AWS offers migration services. It can discover the on-premise applications to streamline and simplify the migration. Database migration service can migrate databases with minimal downtime. You can track all migrations with AWS Migration Hub. You have these many other products. The security in multi-tenancy environment is achieved with Amazon VPC. Isolated cloud resources. We have Amazon Route 53 that is scalable domain name system, elastic load balancing ELB, and other products. Under machine learning, we have Amazon SageMaker, with which you can build, train, and deploy machine learning models at scale. And it supports TensorFlow, which is open source machine intelligent library. Under analytics, we have Amazon Elastic MapReduce, AMR. This is hosted at the framework. These are the AWS products at glance from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services. Section AWS Pricing Monthly Calculator TCO Calculator Amazon offers a free trial which enables you to gain free hands-on experience with the AWS platform products and services. The free trial offers are available to new AWS customers for 12 months period. When your 12 month free usage term expires or if your application exceeds the free usage, you simply pay standard pay-as-you-go service rates. The free offers are Amazon EC2. You get 752 hours per month of Linux and Windows with T2.micro instance usage. You get up to 5 GB of standard storage in Amazon S3, which is secure, durable, and scalable object storage infrastructure. And these are the get and these are the put requests. You can use the resources for testing purpose and gain hands-on experience. AWS offers pay-as-you-go approach for pricing for over 120 cloud services. With AWS, you pay only for the individual services you need for as long as you use them and without requiring long-term contracts or complex licensing. AWS pricing is similar to how you pay for the utilities like water and electricity. You only pay for the services you consume and once you stop using them, there are no additional costs or termination fees. 
PSEGO allows you to adapt to dynamic business needs with no capex, capital expenditure and low opex, operating expenditure. You buy the services on need only and not on demand estimates or forecasts. You can save more by investing in reserved capacity in services like Amazon EC2 and Amazon RDS. Savings are possible up to 75% over equivalent on-demand capacity. With the buy reserved instances, the larger the upfront payment, the greater the discount you get. Amazon Web Services Pricing Here is the service pricing for each of the products. We are going to check with monthly calculator which can give the estimates of all the AWS production services which we are going to use for our application. Let us see the Amazon EC2 pricing. Initially you can sign up for the Amazon free tier and it's free to try. And for the production loads you have four ways to pay for the Amazon EC2 instances. On demand, reserved instances, spot instances. In addition to these, you can have dedicated hosts for your application, which provide you with EC2 instance capacity on physical servers dedicated for your use. You can estimate your monthly bill using AWS Simple Monthly Calculator. The calculator offers estimations for various mix of AWS services to meet any requirement. Let us see Simple Monthly Calculator. Whether you are running a single instance or dozens of individual services, you can estimate your monthly bill using AWS Simple Monthly Calculator. The calculator allows you to estimate individual or multiple prices and use templates to apprise complete solutions. Under the free tier, new customers get free usage tier for first 12 months. The costing varies from the region to region. Let's keep default, US East, North Virginia. Let us add an Amazon EC2 instance, that is virtual server. You can give description to the instance. Let us say server one. A number of instances one and the usage, let us keep default 100%, utilized per month and the type. Let us keep the default one Linux on t1.micro. The type is the tenancy operating system EBS optimized instance type of the set of instances. There are general purpose, memory optimized, compute optimized, accelerated computing and storage optimized computing. You can have the number of CPUs and the memory based on your needs. This is memory intensive and in this M4.16x large, you have 64 virtual CPUs and 250GB of RAM. You can select the operating system. It can be Windows or Windows SQL Server or Linux operating system. The input output is very low for the T1.micro. This comes under the free tier. And on demand hourly cost is $0.02. And let us keep the Linux operating system and the default instance type. Billing option, by default it's on demand and no contract. If you make commitment, if you choose any other contract with upfront payment, you get a discount in the pricing. And if you want to add another server, you can add server 2. Monthly cost for the server is $14, $14.64. As you add the AWS products, the monthly bill estimate is calculated here. This is Amazon EC2. This is $4,000 and we got a free tier discount of $15. Let us see why this cost is so high. We can manipulate. So let us delete this. Let us delete this. And the monthly bill is back to $14. 
with one server with the default instance type. This is the estimate of monthly bill. And you got AWS support basic, which is free added here. You can sign up for the business support as well. This t1.micro instance is covered under the free tier and we got a discount, free tier discount. Total monthly bill is zero. You can export this estimate to CSV and you can download the report. Amazon provides some sample templates which you can use. Let us take this free website on AWS. For deploying this solution is uh, zero dollars. And let us uh, click on the details. So monthly bill is zero here. Let us see what are the production services with this template or with this solution. This template added Amazon EC2 instances, Amazon S3 service, RDA service, DynamoDB, and AWS support basic, and all these total is $68 and we got a complete discount. We got a free trade discount. Free trade discount covered all the above AWS production services. The net monthly payment is zero. This is good to start and practice and gain hands-on experience. Let us click on each of these to see the details. Here for hosting a free website, it selected one free Linux server that is T1. Micro instance monthly cost is uh, 14.64 and one Windows server and EBS volumes for Linux uh, 5 GB for the root Linux volume and 10 GB for data Linux volume and uh, this is for the Windows root and data. Input output operations, IOPS is 100, the default value, baseline throughput is the default, and snap storage. Let us leave the default values here. And it has not added any other combination, elastic IP or the data transfer. We use the default values. If you change the region to any other region, the cost might change. The template is based on US East, North Virginia. If you change the region to any other, you need to manually configure these production services that you may need for your web application to run. You have other templates here. You can take a fair idea from these to create your own set of requirements. We selected marketing website and estimate. Let us see what's the estimate. The recommendation for the marketing website is Amazon S3 service, Amazon EC2, there's no instances, Amazon S3 service, this is the storage. It is recommended CloudFront service for content delivery. You can check and modify these production services as per your need. And the AWS support, the default basic is free and you can sign up for the business or the developer or the enterprise. The free tier discount for new user for first 12 months is applied. So the net payment is 300 plus dollars. So like this, you can make your own monthly estimate with this by using simple monthly calculator. And you can export and download this report. So let us open this report. So this is the report. AWS provides TCO calculator also, total cost of ownership. Compare savings from using AWS and against on-premises and collocation environments with TCO calculator for most cost-effective AWS offering. This tool takes into consideration all the costs to run a solution, including physical facilities, power, and cooling, providing a realistic end-to-end -end comparison of your costs. Let us go to the pricing tab.
and click on this TCO calculator. AWS TCO calculator helps in reducing the need to invest in large capital expenditures. AWS TCO calculator provides the cost savings when using AWS and provides a detailed set of reports. Let us launch the TCO calculator. The TCO calculator comes with basic and advanced options. With advanced, you can configure more options. Let us take basic. You select the currency. Let us keep the US dollar and the type of environment we are comparing against. It can be on-premises or collocation. Let us keep the default on-premises and the AWS region and the geo requirements. You can select the any region you want to compare. Let us keep the default US East Northwest area. Choose the workload type. It can be general or shape point. Let us keep the default general. Next, are we comparing with the physical servers or virtual machines? Let us compare with virtual machines. Let us input some parameters to calculate the TCO. The server type, let us select non-database or database. Let us keep non-database. Application name, give friendly name. And number of virtual machines, let us say two. Number of CPU cores per virtual machine, let us say four. And the memory requirement, let us say 64 GB. And the hypervisor, let us keep VMware. And the guest OS, Linux. And storage type, you want to use SAN, NAS, or object, let us keep SAN. RAS storage capacity, let us say 100 TB. And now calculate the TCO. This is the summary of on-premises versus AWS cloud. The report says we can save up to 72% a year by moving infrastructure to AWS. And the three year total savings could be 300,000 plus dollars. This is the cost breakdown for three years. Server, storage, network, IT lab. We can take a realistic scenario and it provides the best possible comparison. This is excellent graphical representation. And you can explore this report. This is the methodology how costs are calculated. TCY is acquisition cost plus operational cost. AWS makes some assumptions while calculating this cost. You can verify if these assumptions are applicable or you can tweak the report. Some general FAQ is provided here. This is excellent tool for the end user, which helps in quick understanding of the infrastructure and the migration benefits and planning for the quick migration to cloud. So this is the report, you download the report, you provide the basic information and it will be delivered to you. There are many ways to pay for Amazon EC2 instances. Per second billing, on demand, spot instances, reserved instances and dedicated hosts. With per second billing, you pay for only what you use. On demand instances let you pay for the compute capacity by the hour with no long-term commitments. Amazon EC2 spot instances allow you to request spare Amazon EC2 computing capacity for up to 90% of the on-demand pricing. Reserved instances provide with significant discount that is up to 75% compared to on-demand instance pricing. Dedicated hosts allow you to use your existing software licenses including Windows, Linux, and also help meet compliance requirements. Dedicated hosts can be purchased on demand. 
it is hourly. Reservations can provide up to 70% discount compared to on-demand pricing. The main feature of Amazon EC2 dedicated hosts is you can save money on licensing costs. With AWS, you can get volume-based discounts and releases. Section AWS Compute. AWS Cloud Compute is virtual server hosting, container management, and serverless computing. AWS has over 70 infrastructure services with compliance certifications and has the largest global footprint of any other cloud vendor. AWS provides a robust and scalable platform to help organizations of all types and sizes accelerate their operations and pace of innovation. AWS offers compute services allowing you to develop, deploy, run and scale your applications and workloads in the world's most powerful, secure and innovative compute cloud. These are the various products under compute. Amazon EC2 Amazon EC2 is flagship product of AWS under compute. These are the other products. Let us have an overview of all the products. This is Cloud Compute Index of when to select what. Amazon EC2 is virtual machines. Amazon LightSail is virtual private server. Amazon ECS is container service. Amazon Lambda is for code deployment. Like this, AWS helps in choosing the right product for your requirement. Uh, various compute products which are seen Amazon EC2 virtual servers in the cloud Amazon EC2 auto scaling Scale compute capacity to meet demand Amazon EC2 container registry Store and retrieve docker images Amazon elastic container service ECS Run and manage docker containers And others Amazon EC2 is secure and provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. You can always launch applications when needed without any upfront commitments. Amazon EC2 provides you with the complete control of your computing resources and lets you run on Amazon's proven computing environment. Amazon EC2 reduces the time required to obtain and boot new server instances to minutes, allowing you to quickly scale capacity boot up and down as your computing requirements change and all comes with pay only for what you use. Amazon EC2 auto scaling helps you maintain application availability and allows you to dynamically scale your Amazon EC2 capacity up or down automatically according to the conditions you define. You can use Amazon EC2 auto scaling for dynamic scaling of EC2 instances during demand spikes to maintain performance or decrease capacity during less demand to reduce costs. Amazon Elastic Container Registry Amazon ECR is a fully managed Docker container registry that makes it easy for developers to store, manage, deploy Docker container images. Amazon ECR is integrated with Amazon Elastic Container Service ECS. This simplifies your development to production workflows. There are no upfront fees or commitments. You pay only for the amount of data you store in repositories and data transferred to the internet. Amazon ECS Elastic Container Service is a highly scalable, high-performance container orchestration service that supports Docker containers and allows you to run and scale applications on AWS Amazon EKS makes it easy to deploy, manage, and scale containerized applications using Kubernetes on AWS. Amazon LightSail is a virtual server that is cost-effective, fast, and reliable with an easy-to-use interface. AWS Batch is fully managed batch processing at any scale. AWS Batch enables developers, scientists, and engineers to easily and efficiently run hundreds and thousands of batch computing jobs on AWS. There is no additional charge for AWS batch. You only pay for the AWS resources you create to store and run your batch jobs. AWS Elastic Beanstalk is easy to use service 
for deploying and scaling web applications and services developed with Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker on familiar servers such as Apple, Nginx, Passenger, and IIS. Beanstalks makes the deployment easy. You can simply upload your code and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the deployment from capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto-scaling to application health monitoring. There is no additional charge for the Elastic Beanstalk. You pay only for the AWS resources needed to store and run your applications. AWS Fargate Run containers without managing servers or clusters. AWS Fargate is a compute engine for Amazon ECS and EKS that allows you to run containers without having to manage servers or clusters. AWS Lambda Serverless Computing Run code without thinking about servers. Pay only for the compute time you consume. AWS Lambda lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. You pay only for the compute time you consume. There is no charge when your code is not running. With Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application or backend service, all with zero administration. Just upload your code and Lambda will take care of everything required to run and scale your code with high availability. You can set up your code to automatically trigger from other AWS services or call it directly from any web or mobile app. The AWS Serverless Application Repository enables you to quickly deploy code samples, components, and complete applications for common use cases such as web and mobile backends, event and data processing, logging and monitoring, IoT, and more. AWS made load balancing job easier. With Elastic Load Balancing, you achieve fault tolerance for any application by ensuring scalability, performance, and security. Elastic Load Balancing automatically distributes incoming application traffic across multiple targets, such as Amazon EC2 instances, containers, and IP addresses. It can handle varying loads of your application traffic in a single availability zone or across multiple availability zones. Elastic Load Balancing ELB offers three types of load balancers. Application Load Balancer, Network Load Balancer, and Classic Load Balancer. Application Load Balancer is best suited for load balancing of HTTP and HTTPS. Network Load Balancer is best suited for load balancing of TCP traffic where extreme performance is required. Network Load Balancer operating at layer 4 of OSI routes traffic to targets within Amazon VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. It is capable of handling millions of requests per second while maintaining ultra-low latencies. Network Load Balancer is also optimized to handle sudden and volatile patterns. Classic Load Balancer provides basic load balancing across multiple EC2 instances and operates at both request level and connection level. VMware Cloud on AWS Migrate and extend VMware environments to the AWS Cloud. VMware Cloud on AWS is an integrated cloud offering jointly developed by AWS and VMware, delivering a highly scalable, secure, and innovative service that allows organizations to seamlessly migrate extend their on-premises VMware environments to the AWS cloud running on Amazon EC2 bare metal infrastructure. VMware cloud on AWS is ideal for enterprise IT infrastructure and operations. AWS product range is awesome and it's continuously working on providing the best service, best products to its customers, clients, on web services, AWS. Section Amazon EC2. Amazon EC2 is flexible service that provides resizable cloud-based compute capacity in the form of EC2 instances. Amazon EC2 instances are nothing but virtual servers. You can launch one instance or thousands of instances 
in no time. Pay only for what you use. This way, AWS made computing easy. AWS provides broad range of instance types optimized to fit every business need while minimizing costs. You can sign up for Amazon EC2 and test it for free. This is the web page of AWS. You have these many products under AWS, Compute, Storage, Database, Migration, Network and Content Delivery, Machine Learning, and many other products to meet every business need. Amazon EC2 or the virtual servers is the flagship product under compute in AWS. Amazon EC2 is secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. You can launch your applications without any upfront financial commitments. These are the benefits of Amazon EC2, elastic web scale computing, it's completely controlled, flexible hosting services to increase or decrease the capacity within minutes. And you can commission 100 or thousands of server instances simultaneously. You can use Amazon EC2 auto scaling feature to maintain the availability of your EC2 instances fleet and automatically scale your fleet depending on the needs to optimize the cost. You have complete control of your instances, including root access. AWS is flexible. You have the choice of multiple instance types, operating systems, software packages, and many other features. All AWS products are well integrated. Amazon EC2 is integrated with other AWS services like Amazon S3, Amazon RDS, and Amazon VPC to provide complete secure solution for computing, query processing, and cloud storage across a wide range of applications. The other benefits include it's a highly reliable, it's highly secure, and it's economical and easy to start. AWS FreeTire enables you to gain hands-on experience with AWS platform production services. It offers these many features. 750 hours of Amazon EC2, Linux T2.micro instance usage, 750 hours of Amazon EC2, Microsoft Windows Server T2.micro instance, and ELB, EBS, Amazon S3. These are the production services under AWS FreeTire. The FreeTire offers are available to new AWS customers and are available for 12 months duration. When the 12 month free usage duration expires or the application exceeds the tire usage, you continue using the service and you will be charged at pay as you go service rates. These are the Amazon EC2 benefits which you have seen. Amazon EC2 instance types. Amazon EC2 provides wide range of instance types optimized to fit different business needs. Instance types comprise varying combinations of CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity, and it gives you the flexibility to choose the appropriate mix of resources for your applications. These are the different Amazon EC2 instance types. General purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, Accelerated computing, storage optimized to meet various business needs. These are the T3 instances under general purpose. These are the virtual CPUs. These are the CPU credits per hour. And this is the memory and storage type under this instance. These are the T2 instances. And the features include high frequency Intel Xeon processors, bustable CPU governed by CPU credits and consistent baseline performance. These instances give balance of compute, memory, and network resources. And T2.micro is available under AWS FreeTire. These general purpose instances are suitable for websites, web applications, testing, and staging environments. These are the other instance types. These are the features of general purpose instances. 
These are the compute optimized instances. These are optimized for compute intensive workloads and deliver very cost effective high performance at a low price per compute ratio. This is the model, virtual CPUs, memory, instance storage, and dedicated EBS, elastic block storage, bandwidth. These are used for high performance web servers and high performance computing. This can be used for machine and deep learning also. These are the instance features. Memory optimized instances. These are optimized for high performance databases, in memory databases and other memory intensive enterprise applications. These are the models and the virtual CPUs, this is the memory, SSD storage and dedicated EBS bandwidth. These are the various models under this. These are the instance features. Accelerated computing. These are mainly used for machine learning and deep learning and high performance computing. This is the model GPUs, virtual CPUs, memory and GPU memory. These are the various models under this. These are the instance features. Storage optimized instances. These are used to deliver high disk throughput and balance of compute and memory. These are the features of the storage optimized instances. These instances are most suitable for MapReduce based workloads, distributed file systems such as HDFS. General purpose instances are T3, T2, M5, M4. Compute optimized instances are C5, C4 instances. Memory optimized instances are X1, R5, R4, Z1T. Accelerated computing P3, P2, Z3, F1. These are the latest generation of general purpose GPU instances. Storage optimized instances H1, I3, D2. Amazon EC2 spot instances are spare compute capacity in the cloud available to you at a steep discounts compared to on-demand prices. EC2 spot instances enables you to optimize your costs on the AWS cloud and scale your applications throughput up to 10 times for the same budget. You can use EC2 spot instances for various fault tolerant and flexible applications such as test and development environments. This is how EC2 spot instances work. Some of the spot instance benefits are EC2 instances save up to 90% of the on-demand price. You can pass and resume with new hibernate and stop start features. Spot will automatically pass and resume your work around interruptions. So your applications can start right away where they left off. These are easy to launch as long as the capacity is available. You can speed up your job flows and generate business results faster by scaling your application. You can run your applications faster than others at a lower cost, power new business and applications, create new methods of automation and interactivity to unlock new opportunities. Amazon EC2 Spot is tightly integrated with other AWS services like Elastic MapReduce, EC2 Auto Scaling, AWS Auto Scaling, Cloud Formation, AWS Batch, and other services. Amazon EC2 Reserved Instances provide a significant discount up to 75% compared to on demand pricing and provide a capacity reservation when used in specific availability zone. Reserved instances save money and provide flexibility. These are the broad set of Amazon EC2 features like bare metal instances, optimized compute performance and cost, GPU compute instances, high I.O. instances, and many others. AWS provides huge list of operating systems. The operating system images, Amazon machine images, AMIs are pre-configured with set of features suitable to the business needs for ready use.
AWS works with partners and community to provide the best operating systems AMIs available for the customer. AWS Marketplace AWS Marketplace features wide selection of commercial and free software from well-known vendors designed to run your EC2 instances. We will be exploring this AWS Marketplace in the coming sessions. There are several ways to get started with Amazon EC2. You can use Amazon Management Console, Amazon's AWS. Section Amazon EC2 Management Console Dashboard. Access and manage Amazon Web Services through a simple web-based user interface. You can access AWS Management Console through mobile app as well. To quickly view the resources on the go. These are the features of AWS Management Console. You can administer your AWS account. You can find the services in the AWS Console. You can personalize your AWS Console experience by pinning the service shortcuts. You can view the collection of resources that share common tags under resource groups. You have Tag Editor to easily manage tags for all resource types that support tags in any region. You can manage your AWS resources from your mobile device through AWS Console mobile app. The requirements are you need to have an AWS account and sign in with AWS account. Access the management console with that. This is the web page of AWS. Under my account, click on AWS management console or sign into the console. This is the dashboard of AWS and you can quickly find the services in AWS console. You can click on services to view the same dashboard. And the recently visited services are pinned here as shortcuts. Let us go to the Amazon EC2 dashboard. This is Amazon EC2 dashboard. You can view all the resources at glance. You can launch new instances. You can launch new instances and manage new instances that are created. Create instance templates and create instances from templates. Check service health and all the AC2 features here. All the services are showing green which indicates the health is fine. Let us go to the service health dashboard. This is AWS Service Health Dashboard. You can have your own personalized health dashboard as well. It shows the current health status. AWS publishes the most up-to-the-minute information on service availability. You can subscribe to RSS feeds and by region you can view the health status. This is service status history for the last one week that is displayed here and you can get more information as you need. And all the services are showing green. This is personalized health dashboard. It doesn't show any open issues or schedule changes in our region which may impact our services. You can manage your account by this pop-down menu. Click on my account. You can view the account settings, contact information, alternate contacts, and other information. There's a red button you see here. If you no longer need AWS services, you can close your account. You can view my organization information. In an organization, there may be multiple AWS accounts created and managed by different people, different teams. You can consolidate all your AWS accounts into an organization and manage them. Click here to view the billing dashboard. This is billing and cost management console. It will show you the last month's incurred expenditure, month to date expenditure and the forecast. Keep checking this page when you are using AWS services actively to monitor and manage the costs. If you have any bills, the information will be displayed here. You can download the bill in CSV format or print it.
This is Cost Explorer and you can analyze your spends. You can set the AWS budget to alert you whenever AWS costs or usage exceeds or forecasted to exceed. AWS budgets automatically alert you whenever AWS costs or usage exceed based on the thresholds that you set. Cost and usage report is extensive and helps you to control and manage the costs. AWS services can be so customized that help benefit, manage the resources and control the budget. You can set the payment methods here and your account will be charged only when you cross the limits or free tie term of 12 months expires. This is about the payment history that will display all the transactions. You can have consolidated billing. You can set your preferences on billing, cost management and other alerts. You can redeem the promo codes or the AWS credits here. You can manage tax settings here. Let us click on My Security Credentials. Avoid root account for day-to-day -day AWS operations and create AWS IAM users with limited permissions to meet the required purpose. We'll get on to this in another session. Let us go back to Management Console, EC2. This is snapshot of Amazon EC2 dashboard. This is snapshot of AWS Service Health in US East North Virginia region. You manage your account by clicking on pop down menu, the My Account, My Organization, My Billing Dashboard, and Security Credentials can be managed from here. This is overall Service Health Dashboard, which you have seen. These are different regions and the availability zones. Right now, US West Oregon is selected. You can create your instance in any region and availability zone. You can see all the EC2 resources here. Any running instances, dedicated hosts, volumes, key pairs, elastic IP, security groups, and others. You can create an Amazon EC2 instance from here. You can create from template as well. Right now, we don't have any templates and we are going to create one using these large templates. EC2 dashboard itself, it will show the service health and scheduled events for our region, that is US West region. Here it's all green and service health status is good. And you can see the complete service health dashboard for all the regions and the zones here, which you have seen already. Events may include operational activities planned by AWS, such as instance reboots or retirements. This will give a snapshot of all status. You can create the tags while creating an instance and manage tags here. Tags are basically key value pairs. EC2 reports provides detailed usage or billing data for all EC2 instances. Amazon EC2 provides different resources that you can use, such as instances and volumes. When you create your AWS account, AWS sets these limits for these resources on per region basis. This all AWS EC2 service limits. This is the current limit and you can request for the limit increase. This is about the host limits, EBS limits, networking limits, current limit is 200 for auto scaling groups, load balancing limits, and you can request for the limit increase as per your need. You can use AWS Trusted Advisor for more service limits and usage. Based on the support plan, you can unlock all the trusted advisor recommendations. The current plan is basic. These service limits are different for different regions. 
if the default limit is not enough for your requirements you can request for the limit increase and upgrade your support plan you can launch an instance from here or from the ec2 dashboard once you have the instances up and running you can perform these actions on the instances you can launch a template you can use templates to automate instance launches. It can include permission policies, enforce best practices across your organizations. Using a template to launch instances across the organization have these benefits. Streamlining uniform provisioning, simplify permissions, and ensure best practices and governance across your organization. The next one is spot request. You can request for spot instances from here. You have the spot advisor and the actions to be taken on the instances you may have. And the pressing history it will display here. This will save the money for the varying dynamic business needs. You can click here to request for a spot instance. The request can be one time spot instance request or request for a fleet of spot instances to maintain your target capacity or reserve a spot instance for some duration. You can purchase reserved instances to save money. We are going to see this demo in the coming sessions. When shared pool of resources do not meet our requirements, then we can have Amazon EC2 dedicated host in Amazon EC2 dedicated host is a physical server with EC2 instance capacity dedicated for your use. With Amazon EC2 dedicated host, you can minimize software licensing costs with bring your own license by all scenario. Scheduled instances. Scheduled instances allow you to reserve Amazon EC2 instances on a recurring schedule. Amazon Machine Images AMIs, you can use the default offerings or purchase customized commercial software from AWS Marketplace. We're going to see this EBS, Network on Security, Load Balancing, Auto Scaling, Systems Manager Services, Systems Manager Resources in the demos. This is Support Center. If you have any issue, you can use this support center to create a case and get it resolved. The current support plan is basic for me and it can be changed. We can change this to any other support plan to meet our needs. AWS support provides access to billing, account assistance, technical support and guidance. You have basic plan, developer, business and enterprise. These are the various features of each plan. This is the support pricing. Basic is free. The business support is $100 per month and for the enterprise, it's around 15K per month. You can change the plan anytime. You can create a case. You can create a case regarding billing or service limit increase or technical support. Technical support is not available under basic support plan. You can select the service, let us say billing, and you can select the category, these many options, let us say charge inquiry. For the service and the category selected, some standard FAQs are available. In most of the cases, they will resolve your issues. Check all the FAQs. If they do not resolve your issue, then you create a case. Let us say high charges. You may provide the description and you can add attachments, screenshots or documents. You have two contact methods, web that is by the email and the team will respond in standard time frame and the phone. And you can specify the region, phone number and you can submit the query. And the AWS will call back and will resolve the issue. You can view all the case histories here. These are some of the snapshots, events, tags, reports, 
limits creating a case launching an instance creating launch templates spot instances requesting various types of spot instances purchasing reserved instances dedicated hosts scheduled instances amazon machine images amis this is aws marketplace let us see marketplace you have these many categories thousands of software listings from independent software vendors the popular categories are operating system security networking explore this page for more information view all the categories Amazon Web Services Section Amazon EC2 Launch Linux Virtual Machine Amazon EC2 are the virtual server instances are secure and provide resizable compute capacity in the cloud. You can launch applications without upfront financial commitments. AWS EC2 is flexible service that provides resizable cloud-based compute capacity in the form of EC2 instances or VM instances. You can sign up for Amazon EC2 for free. Let's get started. Let us launch a Linux virtual machine. As a prerequisite, sign up for the free AWS account first. Once you sign up, sign into your AWS account using your account credentials. To sign in using IAM user credentials, Choose this sign into a different account link and provide your credentials. This is snapshot of Amazon EC2 dashboard where you can see all the resources at glance. You can launch Amazon EC2 instance or the virtual server from here. We can create instance from templates which help in quick launching of instances. Using AWS Management Console, we are launching Linux EC2 instance. You click on the launch instance and configure your EC2 instance. Choose instance type, add storage, tags, and configure security group. Create a key pair, create instance, and connect to the instance. As a last step, don't forget to terminate instances when you don't need them any longer. Let's get started. Let us sign into the console. You can search for the AWS service you are looking by typing here or by clicking the services pop down menu, which lists all the AWS production services. Okay, let us select EC2. And right now we are in US West region and Oregon availability zone. So let us keep it default. And let us click on launch instance. This is a wizard with simple seven steps for launching Amazon EC2 instance or virtual server instance. We are in step one for choosing AMI. AMI is a template that contains software configuration, operating system, application server, and pre-built applications. AMI is required to launch your instance. You can choose the AMIs provided by the AWS or the user community or the AWS marketplace. You can bring your own AMIs also. You notice that some AMIs are marked as free tier eligible. While practicing, don't forget to select the AMI which is free tier eligible so that you won't incur any costs for practice. Let us select this Amazon Linux. Amazon machine images use one of the two types of virtualization para virtual that is PV or hardware virtual machine HVM. The main difference between PV and HVM AMIs are the way in which they boot and whether they can take the advantage of special hardware extensions 
such as CPU, network and storage for better performance. Here the virtualization type is HVM. ENA is elastic network adapter and that's enabled here. The root device volume contains the image used to boot the instance. Here the root device type is CVS, elastic block storage. And you can select one of these AMIs or you can have your own AMIs or use AWS Marketplace for customized feature-rich AMIs. You can buy the software from trusted vendors like SAP, Zen, Microsoft, Zuniper, Trend Micro and many others. These are the featured softwares, popular softwares and categorized like this. You can choose the one which meets the business needs. And you can also select community provided AMIs. Let us select this free tier eligible Amazon Linux. Amazon EC2 provides wide range of instance types optimized to fit different business needs. The different instance types have different combinations of CPU, memory, storage, and networking capacity and gives the flexibility to choose appropriate mix of resources for applications. We are in step 2, choose an instance type. Here it displays all instance types and we can select if you want GPU graphics, these are the instances. And if you want memory optimized, these are the instances. Let us select micro instances. Let us select the instances which are free tier eligible so that while practicing you won't incur any charges. These micro instances are eligible for AWS free usage tier for the first 12 months. And let us select this general purpose to dot micro which contains one virtual CPU and one GB memory and the instance storage is ABS. And the network performance is low to moderate and IPv6 support, yes, for this. Okay, with other default settings, you can review and launch from here itself or configure all these steps. The next one is configure instance details. Configure the instance to suit your requirements. You can launch the number of instances, how many instances you want. Do you want to launch an auto scaling group? What are the purchase options? You can request for the spot instances now itself and the network. You can use the default VPC virtual private cloud or create new VPC. You can use the default subnet or create a new subnet. And public IP. Auto assigning is enabled. By default it's enabled and keep it default. Adding instance to placement group is for greater redundancy and higher network throughput. Let it be default. IAM role. By default, none and you can create IAM roles for enforcing various security needs. Shutdown behavior. By default, it is stop and let us keep default. And you can check here to protect against accidental termination. And you can enable CloudWatch detailed monitoring by checking this. And you can know more about the CloudWatch from here. Tenancy. How you want to run your hardware. It's a shared or dedicated. Let us keep default. Know more about Amazon EC2 dedicated instances. Let it be default shared. We have selected t2.micro instance type, which is free tier eligible. If we select unlimited option, then additional charges are applied. Let us check the advanced details. You can configure the startup scripts using these advanced details. Let us go to the next step. Step 4. Add storage. This is the default storage that is configured volume type and this is device and this is snapshot size is 8 GB volume type ZP2 general purpose SSD let us keep default IOPS minimum and the burstable IOPS and throughput 
throughput is not available as this is not performance oriented but for testing purpose. By default, this is checked to delete the storage on termination and the data is not encrypted. Let us keep this default options. And if you want to add a new volume, you can add from here. Amazon EBS is block level storage volume that persists independently from the life of EC2 instance. You can stop and start your instance at a later time as well. And the device type you can select and snapshot and the size volume type and the IOPS by default this volume is not deleted on termination this is persistent storage and if you want you can encrypt this volume let us delete this and go with default storage Free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 GB of EBS, general purpose SSD or magnetic storage. Next step is adding tags. The tag is a key value pair that can be applied to volumes, instances or both. Let us add tag. Let us say name, server one and add another tag, owner admin1 purpose demo like this you can create the tags let us go to the next step configure security group the security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance you can add rules to allow specific ip address or the specific traffic to reach your instance uh, this is existing default VPC security group. Inbound rules applied are permit all traffic, all protocols, all port ranges. This is open and insecure. We need to configure inbound rules to permit authorized access only. Let us create a new security group. So let's give a name demo as you want. And uh, let this be there. And the type. You can configure the protocols here. It's a Linux instance we are creating and let us take SSH, TCP protocol and the port 22. From source, we can customize the access or apply anywhere or you can specify an IP address. This 0000/0 is open. For testing purpose, let the source be 0000/0 which is permit any traffic. This allows all IP addresses to access your instance. For high security, we should limit this access to permitted IP ranges or specific IPs only. So we have configured our instance and let us review. It's cautioning us on the security group. Demo SG1 which we have configured is open to the world. Okay, for demo purpose, it's not an issue. For the Linux instance, we have selected free tier eligible Amazon Linux to AMI and instance type is uh, t2.micro. We have created demo-sg1 to permit SSH traffic from anywhere. And we are creating one instance. Purchasing option is on demand. We have left all the default options. Storage, it's 8 GB for the root and this is a default storage and this is tags info let us launch amazon ec2 linux virtual machine and this is a new instance and we don't have any key pairs let us create a key pair for windows amis the private key is required to obtain password to log into your instance a key pair consists of a public key that is stored in aws cloud stores and a private key is stored on your PC from where you want to access the Linux instance and the private key allows you to connect to your instance securely using SSH. Let us create a key pair for accessing our Amazon EC2 Linux instance. Create a new key pair. Let us give a name to that. Now key pair will be generated and we have to download the key pair and store it 
and we have to download the private key file that is .pem file and store it in a secure and accessible location. So be warned that you will not be able to download the file again after it is created. So let us download the key pair. Let us save the file. It's downloaded. Now let us launch our instance. Now instances are being launched and it will take few minutes until they are in the running state when they will be ready for use. Let us click on this. Now our instance is launched and the instance state is running. We haven't given any name. Let us give a name. And this is the instance ID, instance type, availability zone, instance state, status checks, no alarms. And this is the public DNS and the public IP that is assigned. And demo key pair is configured and monitoring is disabled. This dashboard can have all the instances that we have launched. This is instance ID. This is the public DNS. And this is the public IP that is assigned. We'll be using this IP address to access our instance. VPC ID, default subnet, and launch date and time. Let us see status checks. Basic status checks are through that is system reachability check and instance reachability check. Both are passed. And we can create additional check alarms. Monitoring. So we don't have any alarms configured yet in the CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch gives the complete visibility of our cloud resources and applications. Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring and management service built for developers, system operators, and IT managers. CloudWatch provides valuable data and actionable insights to monitor your applications understand and respond to the system-wide performance changes and it also optimizes resource utilization. It's easy to get started with CloudWatch. There is no upfront commitment or minimum fee. You simply pay for what you use. You will be charged at the end of the month for what you use. These are the CloudWatch metrics for our Linux instance. CPU utilization, discrete, discrete operations, Describes network in and out, packets in and out, and these are the basic monitoring metrics. We can enable detailed monitoring for more insights. We can create an alarm. We can use CloudWatch alarms to be notified automatically whenever metric thresholds reaches the level specified. SNS is simple notification service and we can create a topic here and we can specify the recipients we can specify the actions to be taken recover stop terminate or report the instance based on the conditions that you configure here the metrics can be any of these let us say CPU utilization of 75% if it is greater than or equal to for at least one consecutive period of five minutes or any other duration that we can set. You can give a name, friendly name to this alarm. Uh, you can create an alarm. This is the tag default key value pair that is created. You can add more tags or edit the tags here. The default frequency of all the basic monitoring is five minutes and you can enable detailed monitoring to get this metrics at one minute frequency. Detailed monitoring is chargeable. If it's a production workload, you can enable and use the feature. Please watch next session on how to access and use newly course on Amazon Web Services. Section Amazon EC2 Accessing a Linux VM. If you are new to AWS, sign up for a free account. Free user style allows you to launch and run micro instances for a year for free. You will be charged only when your free tire usage exceeds or the 12 month duration expires. Launching an Amazon EC2 instance is a seven step simple process. Let us sign into the console. Select EC2 under compute 
or you can search for the AWS services. Select EC2. This is Amazon EC2 dashboard. Our default region is US West, Oregon Availability Zone. Let us click on Launch Instance. This is Amazon EC2 Launch Wizard with 7 steps. We are in step 1. In the previous session, we have seen how to create an Amazon EC2 instance. Let us quickly create Amazon Linux EC2 instance. Let us select Amazon Linux to AMI, which is free tier eligible. You have the options to select from your own AMIs or from the marketplace or from the community AMIs. Let us select this. Step 2. Choose an instance type. Let us select general purpose t2.micro, which is free tier eligible, which has one virtual CPU, one GB RAM, and performance is low to moderate. Let us click next. So let us create one instance and let us leave all other options default. Default VPC, default subnet, auto assign public IP. Let us click next. Step 4. Add storage. For the root volume, we have 8 GB general purpose SSD. Let us go with this. Next. Step 5. Add tags. Let us click next. Security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance. We have some security groups here. Let us create a new security group. So this rule is applicable for us, SSH, permit SSH, TCP, port 22, and custom source 0000-0. This allow all IP addresses to access your instance. For demo and practice, it is fine, but generally we should restrict the source IP address which can access this instance. Let us go with the default options here. The last step, review and launch. It's warning us that our security group is open to the world. It's okay for now. So the EMI which you selected, the instance type, security group, permit SSH from all source, create one instance, default storage, and tags. We are fine. Let us go with the launch. And to access our Linux instance securely, we need a key pair. A key pair consists of a public key that is stored in the AWS cloud and the private key file that will be stored on your system. Let us create a new key pair. You need to download the private key file .pm file and store it in secure and accessible location. Okay. Let us launch instance. It will take a couple of minutes before this instance is ready for us to use. Currently it's provisioning. Yes, our instance is ready. And we have not named it yet. Let us name. This is instance ID. Instance is running. Type. This is the key pair and the public DNS and the public IP that is assigned. This is the CloudWatch matrix and the basic monitoring is available for CPU utilization, disk reads, disk writes, network in and out, network packet in and out. Detailed monitoring can be enabled and it gives metrics at one minute frequency. It is chargeable and for the production workloads, this may be considered. We can configure the CloudWatch alarms. Let us create an alarm when average of CPU utilization, the CloudWatch metric, is greater than or equal to 75% for at least one consecutive period of 5 minutes. Let us name this as CPU 75. Specify the action to be taken. Recover, stop, terminate or reboot the instance. And send the alert to 
the email ID that you specify here. When you are creating CPU utilization, it will give a snapshot of current metrics. This matrix will help in configuring the alarm conditions. On the selected instance, we can take these actions. Connect. You can launch more instances like this. An instance can be stopped, rebooted or terminated. On the instance settings, you can create an image out of this. You can change the security groups. And detailed monitoring can be enabled here. Okay, we want to connect to this instance. We need SSH client to connect to this instance. The recommended one is using a putty or git bash. Let us go for the putty. You select the second one. Click on download. The latest version is 0 0.70. So I would like to go with 64-bit installer. Okay, let us install this. By default, Putty doesn't support private key format that is .pem. We can use Putty Zen tool that comes with the Putty to convert .pem file to .ppk. Let's open Putty Zen. This is Putty key generator. Our key is kp-new.pem. Let us convert this to ppk. We have private key file here and let us click on load. So let us open. And now we need to save this private key. We can save the private key without passphrase. But it's advised to go with passphrase for extra security. These are the default parameters and let us click on save. Let us give the same name. It will save as a ppk file. Okay, we are done. For more security, change the permissions of the private key. Now let us connect to our instance. Let us copy the public DNS that is assigned to our instance. This is the host name, port 22. To log into this instance using the key pair, let us go to the SSH auth. Let us browse for the private key file. Let us connect. Let us enter the passphrase that we have inputted while creating the private key. Now we securely connect it to our instance. Okay, now let us connect with the git bash. We need to specify the path to the pm file. We have copied this file to the demo folder in C. Let us connect. Let us trust this host and click yes. We have successfully launched Amazon EC2 Linux instance and connected to it. Now we are back to our presentation. These are some of the screenshots. For this step one, choosing an Amazon machine image. And the last step, review instance launch. We have created a keypad to securely connect to our Linux instance. Popular SSH clients for Windows are Putty and Git for Windows. Search by Putty in Google and download the Putty installer for Windows. This is Amazon EC2 dashboard. Click connect to connect to the instance. So these are the instructions how to connect with the SSH client. To connect to our instance using Putty, we have downloaded the installer and installed the Putty. We got Putty and Putty Zen for generating private key. Putty doesn't support private key format that is .pem generated by the Amazon EC2. That is the reason we use Putty Zen tool that comes with Putty to convert .pm file to .ppk format. 
Open the Pateki generator, click on load and open the .pm file. Now add passphrase for extra security. Now click on save private key. This will save as .ppk file. Open Pateki and in the host name you enter ec2-user and the public DNS which was assigned to our instance and the port 22 SSH and to use the private key let us select SSH auth and browse for the ppk file this is putty connection screen connecting to linux instance using putty download page for the git install git you have the option to use the git from git bash or git from the windows command prompt choose https transport backend select use open ssl library terminal emulator use minty done connect to the ec2 instance with git bash ssh space hyphen i and the path of pm file space ec2 hyphen user at the public dns that is assigned to our instance we are connected as a final step whenever testing is done or our purpose is achieved terminate your instance this is to avoid incurring any further charges let us select the instance click on actions instance state and terminate on the storage volume it's giving a warning you click on s to terminate it takes a couple of minutes to shut down and terminate the instance the course on amazon web services section amazon ec2 launch and access windows virtual machine amazon ec2 is flagship product of aws under compute it is secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. EC2 is a flexible service that provides resizable cloud-based compute capacity in the form of EC2 instances. Let us sign up for a free account and log into your account. This is EC2 dashboard and we can launch instances from here. This is snapshot of Amazon EC2 resources in US West region, Oregon availability zone. Let us create an instance by clicking on this. Under free usage tier, we can launch and run micro instances for a year for free. This is a launching wizard with seven steps. We can launch AWS EC2 instance in seven simple steps. Step one, choose an Amazon machine image. Amazon machine image or the AMI is a template that contains the software configuration operating system, application layer, and applications required to launch your instance. You can use the AMIs provided by the AWS or your own AMIs or buy from AWS Marketplace or use the community provided AMIs. You notice that some AMIs are marked as free tier eligible. When you are practicing AWS production services, be sure to select free tier eligible AMI so that you will not incur any unnecessary charges if you have our own amis they will be displayed here if we don't have any marketplace you can buy the customized software that runs in the aws cloud you can buy the software to meet specific needs from many vendors these are the community amis okay let us go back to quick start let us select Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base. This is free tier eligible and the root device type is EBS. Virtualization type is HVM hardware virtual machine and the other option being PV para virtual. ENA elastic network adapter this is enabled and let us select this. Now we are in step 2 choose an instance type. Amazon EC2 provides a wide selection of instance types optimized to fit different business needs. Instances are virtual servers that can run your applications. The different type of instances have CPU, memory, storage and networking capacity to give you the flexibility to choose the appropriate 
to select the right specification for your applications. We have general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, and these many instance types. This is general purpose instance type. Instance type is t2.micro, free tier eligible. This comes with one virtual CPU and EBS elastic block storage. Network performance is low to moderate. And let us go with this. If you have any other business needs, you can select any other instances that you may need. Free tier eligible, then you are going to incur the cost. Let us select this. This is step 3, configure instance details. Now we can directly review and launch with the default settings or we can configure the instance details. We are going to configure one instance. We can launch this instance into auto scaling group also. And the purchasing option, we can request spot instances now itself or we can do it later. We'll use the default virtual private cloud VPC or we can create a new VPC. Let us go with the default one. Let us use the default subnet. We can create a new subnet also. Auto assign public IP. By default, this is enabled and let us keep it enabled. Adding instance to placement group is for redundancy and good performance. And let us not add now. Domain join directory. We don't have any directory and we can create a new directory if you want. IAM roles are for applying restrictions to access various AWS resources. We don't have one, we can create one if you want. Let us go with default. Shutdown behavior, it is stop by default and let it be default. We can enable terminate protection so that our instance will not be accidentally terminated. CloudWatch monitoring. CloudWatch is monitoring and management service built for developers, system operators, and IT managers. Default CloudWatch metrics are free and if you want to enable CloudWatch detail monitoring with one minute updates, then you can enable this and it's chargeable. Let us go with default. For the production workloads, we can enable detail monitoring. For now, we go with default tenancy. We can use shared or dedicated instance. If you want Amazon EC2 dedicated instance, they are chargeable and you can explore this page. If you want GPU support and 3D acceleration and graphics and high performance, you can add elastic GPUs and charges are applicable as per your need. By default, we are using micro instance, which is free tier eligible. And if you enable this, unlimited additional charges may be applied. This unlimited will boost burstable performance. We can view the advanced details. You can enter any information like startup scripts or any other information here. And then go to the next step that is add storage. These are the default settings of our storage and the default size is 30 GB and volume type is general purpose SSD. IOPS minimum and burstable 100 slash 3000 and delete on termination is checked here. And the volume is not encrypted. If you want to add new volumes, you can add here. The size can be configured by default. This volume is persistent and not deleted on termination. If you want, you can check this and you can go for the encryption. Let us go to the next step. We can add the tags. Tags are nothing but key value pairs which will be applied to instances and volumes. It's like a name. This can be applied to the instances, volumes, or both. Next step, configure security group. A security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance. You can add inbound rules to allow specific traffic to reach your instance. We have existing security group. Inbound rules for this are permit all types of traffic, all protocols, all port ranges from everywhere. This is an open security group and has no security. Let us create a new security group. Let us give a name. 
we want to permit RDP, remote desktop protocol, and we can configure any other protocols we may need. TCP protocol port range 3389, this is a default RDP port. And source custom, you can configure the specific source IPs. 0000 0 is open and allows all IP addresses to access your instance. We can give a description. This instance we are creating is for demo purpose. Let us keep the default source and let us click on review and launch. It's warning us that our security group is open to the world. So no worries as of now. We can review all the features that were configured. So let us click on launch, the last step. We need a key pair to fetch the Windows password. A key pair consists of a public key that AWS stores in the cloud and the private key that you store it on your system from where you want to access the AWS EC2 instance. This public and private key combination will help you to connect to your instance securely. We have existing key pair and let us create a new key pair. Let us give a name Windows key pair. Let us download. Store this .pm file in secure and accessible location. Let us click on launch instances. We have corrected the error and named the security group as SG Windows 1. And let us review and launch. Let us use Windows key pair which was generated. Acknowledge. Yeah, it's creating. Yes, the instances are now being launched. It will take a few minutes to get it into the running state when we can use. It is still processing. Let us pause for a while and come back. By the time it will be in the running state. This is newly launched instance and it is in the running state. So we have not named it. Let us name it as uh, Win16. And this is instance ID, instance type, availability zone, and status checks is still initializing. This is the public DNS and the public IP address that is assigned, that is auto assigned. These are the configuration parameters of for instance. This is public DNS, public IP, status checks. So let us come back and check this till it is initializing. So let us connect to our instance. We need to fetch the Windows password. For that, click here. We need to wait for some more time to retrieve the auto-generated password. Let us pause for a moment and come back after some time. Statistics are green and uh, the two checks are system reachability and instance reachability. Both are passed. Monitoring. This screen will display the CloudWatch metrics. It's showing the data for last hour. We don't have any data. We can watch this basic monitoring after some time. By default, basic monitoring is available to us. And if you want detailed monitoring, we can enable it. It will provide the metrics at one minute frequency and is chargeable. For the production workloads, you may go for it. Let us cancel. Let us fetch Windows password to connect to the Windows EC2 instance. We use remote desktop connection to connect to the Windows instance. To auto generate the Windows password, we'll use the key pair. Let us use the Windows key pair, which is associated with the instance where it is created. We have used Windows key pair while creating this Windows instance. Now we are going to find the key pair path. Let us use the Windows hyphen key pair dot pm file. Let us decrypt the password. The password is decrypted and we have the password here. 
let us copy the password this is the public dns this is the public dns this is the public dns to which we are going to connect and the username is administrator and this is the password that is this is the password that is descriptive let us copy this password onto clipboard and now previously we have downloaded windows rdp file Now let us download the remote desktop file. Now let's download the rem now let us download the remote desktop file. Just download it. Let us click on this. Let us, let us apply the password that we have copied, accept the certificate error, now it's connecting. This is our windows instance, so now we are connected and you can start using your server This is our Windows Server that is configured just. Now we got into the remote server. So in shortest possible time you got your Windows Server set up. In less than few minutes we have our Windows Server in the cloud on AWS and ready for use. You can start configuring the server and applications. This is the power of Amazon EC2. Let us close this instance. This is all basic monitoring of CloudWatch metrics. And for the instance running, we have got different options. You can stop, reboot, or terminate. And the instance settings that can be configured, it's added it tags. It can be attached to auto scaling group. And attach or replace IAM role. And change termination protection. You can change to T2 Unlimited. You can get the system log or instance screenshot. You can create an image out of this instance. Networking and security, you can change the security groups or attach a new network interface. And you can manage IP addresses. You can enable CloudWatch detail monitoring from here. Also add edit alarms. These are some of the screenshots which we have captured. Step 1. Choose an Amazon machine image. Step 2. Choose instance type. Step 3. Configure instance details. Step 4. Add storage. Step 5. Add tags. Step 6. Configure security group. Step 7. The last one. Review instance launch. We have created a key pair to generate Windows EC2 instance administrator password. We fetched the password and downloaded remote desktop file to connect to the instance. This is snapshot of Windows Server Amazon EC2 instance that we have just created. And when testing is done or we don't need our instance anymore, Terminate the AWS resources as you will not incur any additional or further charges on your instances. Let us terminate our Windows instance. 
This is the Windows instance that we have just created and go to actions, instance state and terminate. This is the root EBS volume and we don't have any termination protection so this can go. So click on S terminate. It is shutting down now and it will take a couple of minutes to terminate the instance. The course on Amazon Web Services. Section Amazon EC2 Launch WordPress Website WordPress is a free and open source content management system CMS based on PHP and MySQL. Features include a plugin architecture and a template system. Most associated with blogging and support other types of web content as well. Around 25% of the websites on the internet are based on WordPress. We can launch WordPress website easily with Amazon EC2 with pre-configured AMIs that are available through AWS Marketplace. Let us go through 7-step EC2 instance launch wizard to launch WordPress website. This is Amazon Web Services web page. Let us sign into the console. Select EC2. This is Amazon EC2 dashboard. Let us create an instance by clicking launch instance. We are in step 1 choosing an Amazon machine image. Search for the keywords WordPress and uh, go to marketplace. You select this WordPress certified by Bitnami which is free tier eligible. Zero dollars for the software and it has additional AWS usage charges. And you have many customized AMIs supporting WordPress. Let us go with this. Select. These are the specifications. And we have the pricing details here. Hourly fees for the various instance types. We can choose the type that suits the business need. So we may go for the T2 Nano which costs zero dollars for the software and 0.006 dollars for the EC2. So total cost per hour would be 0.006 dollars. And EBS general purpose volumes cost 0.1 dollar per GB month of provision storage. Let us continue. Let us go with T2.nano. Click next. So let us create one instance. Let us keep default VPC, subnet, and other configuration parameters. Click next. So 10 GB space for the root volume, general purpose SSD. Click next. Add tax. Click next. This is new security group suggested for our WordPress installation. Permitting SSH, HTTP and HTTPS from anywhere. Let us click next. So it's warning us that our security group is open to the world as it can be accessed from anywhere. That is 0000/0. And it's warning us this is not eligible for the free tier usage. We can read the end user license agreement. And let us review all the selections and click on launch. Let us use the existing key pair, acknowledge and click launch instances. So instance launch is being initiated and it may take a couple of minutes. Our instances are now being launched. Yes, it's running. Let us name it. Let us use Putty to connect to this instance. And select the key pair, private key, SSH auth, browse for the key. And connect. Trust this host and click yes. Yes, now we are connected. 
Now we have our WordPress instance running. Let us copy the public IP and paste it into a browser. Our WordPress is ready. So let us customize this. Let us log into the admin control panel for this WordPress installation. Admin login page is this is the admin login page for the WordPress. Default username for our WordPress installation is user and let us find out the password. We can fetch the password for the WordPress admin from the system log. Select the instance, actions, instance settings, get system log. The password will be generated while creating the instance. Scroll to the bottom. Carefully watch for the password. Yes, it is here. So this is the password. Copy this. And default username is user for the WordPress. Let us paste. Login. Yes, successful. We are into the admin dashboard of the WordPress. So let us go through the themes. We can watch the modifications live. This is this is our web page and let us make some changes. Let us make the site identity. Let us say we are creating a website for anti-corruption. So fight against corruption. Social awakening initiative. And let us give an icon. Let us select this image. Drag it here. Select. Let us publish this. Refresh the page. See the title and the logo. So let us change this picture as well. Let us change the header picture. Let us crop the image. Publish, refresh the page. Yes, this is our website. Let us change the theme to 2016. Activate. Let us refresh the page. Let us make a post. Let us publish this post. Refresh the page. Our post is here in the blog. You can do wonders and build fantastic websites with WordPress. Let's create a page. Okay, let us publish this. And let us refresh the web page. Let's add this page. Publish. Yes, here is our web page. We can change the themes from tons of themes that are available. So these are pre-installed with our installation. And if you want, you can click on add new and you can fetch a lot. You will see a lot many themes that are available and you can choose the theme as per your business need. Okay, this is all about the WordPress. Okay, let us close this. Back to our management console. We have successfully installed and customized WordPress application. Back to our presentation. And don't forget to terminate the instances when you don't need them any longer. This is our WordPress installation and click Actions, Instance State and Terminate. So accept the warning, click Yes to terminate. Yeah, it's terminated. This is all Section AWS Elastic Beanstalk. AWS Elastic Beanstalk is an easy to use service 
for deploying and scaling web applications and services developed with Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and Docker on servers like Apache, NGINX, Passenger, and IAS. Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the deployment from capacity provisioning, auto-scaling to application health monitoring. There is no additional charge for AWS Beanstalk. You pay for the AWS resources like EC2 instances or S3 buckets you create to store and run your application. You pay only for what you use and there is no minimum fees or upfront commitments. Elastic Beanstalk is under compute. The benefits include it's fast and simple to begin, developer productivity, impossible to outgrow, and complete resource control. New AWS customers who are eligible for AWS free use tire can deploy an application in Elastic Beanstalk for free. Let us take a demo. Create AWS account and log into AWS Management Console. Open Elastic Beanstalk dashboard. Create application. Select a platform, upload an application or use a sample and run application. Check out of scaling group, EC2 instances and finally clean up. This is AWS Management Console. Let us select Elastic Beanstalk under Compute or search here. With Elastic Beanstalk, you can deploy, monitor and scale an application quickly and easily. Let us deploy a sample application. Click Get Started. Deploy a sample application in simple and easy steps. Select a platform. Upload an application or use a sample and run it. All these platforms are supported. Creating a web app. Creating new application and environment with sample application or your own code. By creating an environment, you allow AWS Beanstalk to manage AWS resources and permissions on your behalf. Let us name the application as CB app one and platform. Let us say PHP. We can use our own code by uploading it or use a sample application that is provided by the AWS. Let us click on configure more options. We can change the service default values and we can customize the configuration. Currently we are testing with free tier eligibility coverage. For low cost, the options for the software are here and the instances t1.micro which is free tier eligible and load balancers, no load balancers, rolling updates or deployments. These are the default options and if you want high availability, you can configure the capacity, load balancer and other information or custom configuration. You can modify the parameters. For now, let us select low cost free tier eligibility coverage. Create app. Creating environment for our app. It will take a couple of minutes. So creating CB app environment. Creating our app and it's showing the progress. Created elastic IP. App is created. Health is green and OK. This is the application running version. And platform is PHP. And successfully launched environment. For the selected app, we can apply these actions. Load configuration, save configuration, restart app servers, rebuild environment, and terminate the environment when it is no longer needed. Let us go to dashboard. Let us select all applications. Sample application is successfully launched. Let us click on the app. Let us see configuration. You can modify the configuration as needed. These are logs. 
This is the URL of the app and let us launch it. Congratulations. Our AWS Elastic Beanstalk PHP application is running on dedicated environment in the AWS cloud. Let us close this. Let us see configuration. EB launched one EC2 instance type t1.micro and these are the other parameters. You can modify as needed. Let us go to EC2 dashboard and see the instances. This is EC2 dashboard and one instance is running. Okay, it launched one elastic IP address. This is the launch configuration that is created for our auto scaling group. This is the auto scaling group that is created and the activity histories. One EC2 instance is launched and no scaling policies. This is the instance, instance ID. Monitoring is not enabled for auto scaling metrics and we can enable group metrics collection. Notifications to be sent to this SNS topic and on the conditions whenever instances launch, terminate or fail to launch or fail to terminate. Tags, default key value pairs, tags are created and scheduled actions, none. Lifecycle hooks, none. This application is highly available with auto scaling this is EC2 dashboard and let us delete the instance and see. Let us open the application. This is our application and uh, let us open this. Click on the URL to open the application. This is EC2 dashboard and let us delete this instance and see what happens. Terminate. Click yes. So let us go to auto scaling group. Activity history. There is a default cooldown time for the auto scaling group to react to provision another instance in the place of terminated one. So let us check the application. As we have only one instance, there is no redundancy. So we got the alerts, the instance is down. Let us go to EC2 dashboard. One instance is running. The earlier one terminated is this. New instance is provisioned by the auto scaling group and it's running. Let us go to auto scaling. Activity history. The desired instance capacity is one that is configured for this app. In place of terminated EC2 instance, new EC2 instance is launched. Let us check the app dashboard. Let us refresh the page. This is up again. Let us go to EB dashboard. Our application is back and running. This is so simple that AWS infrastructure manages everything behind to see that your application runs smoothly. These are some snapshots. Application is created and running. Testing the application. This is app dashboard. Configuration. We can modify the configuration. Last 100 lines of logs will be displayed here. Health overview. This is monitoring. Alarms, we have not configured any. Managed updates, not enabled for this environment. Event logs. And key value pair tags. Okay, let us go to the dashboard. When we don't need any app any longer, then we should terminate the environment. Let us select Actions, Terminate Environment. Let us enter the name of the environment. Click on Terminate. This will free up the resources like auto scaling groups, 
launch configurations and the EC2 instances. So let us click on view events. Terminate is in progress. It will take a couple of minutes as it need to free up the resources including elastic IP, auto scaling groups. Yes, our app is terminated now. Let us check the uh, auto scaling group. This is easy to dashboard and no instances are running. The two are terminated. Launch configuration is deleted. Auto scaling group is deleted. Let us check elastic IPs. This is also deleted. Okay, the cleanup process is complete. This is section Amazon EC2 auto scaling. With Amazon EC2 auto scaling, you can add or remove compute capacity to make changes in demand. Amazon EC2 auto scaling helps you maintain application availability, allows you to dynamically scale your Amazon EC2 capacity up or down automatically according to the conditions you define. You can maintain the desired number of Amazon EC2 instances to maintain the health and the availability of your fleet. You can scale up during the demand spikes to maintain performance and decrease capacity during lean period to reduce cost. The benefits include improved fault tolerance, increased application availability, and lower cost. Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling is enabled by Amazon CloudWatch and carries no additional fees. However, Amazon EC2 and Amazon CloudWatch service fees apply and are billed separately. Let us take a demo. Create an AWS account and sign into Management Console. Then create and configure Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling Group. Configure Auto Scaling Policies. And finally, clean up when no longer required. These are the features which are seen. This is Amazon Management Console. We can select AWS Auto Scaling under Management Tools or you can search for it. You can also use Amazon EC2 Dashboard. EC2 is under Compute. Let us select this. This is Amazon EC2 Dashboard. On the left navigation menu, you click on Launch Configurations under auto scaling okay click on create launch configuration this is a six step process and the first step is choose AMI an AMI is a template that contains the software configuration required to launch your instance you can select the AMIs provided by AWS you can use your own AMIs buy from AWS marketplace or pick from community AMIs let us select Amazon Linux to AMI, which is free tier eligible. Step 2. Choose instance type. Choose general purpose T2.micro, which is free tier eligible, which has one virtual CPU and one GB RAM. Network performance low to moderate. Click next. Step 3. Configure details. Let us give a name. You can request for the spot instances now or later, and you can specify the maximum price. Let us go with default unchecked, IAM role, let it be default none, monitoring, if you enable CloudWatch detailed monitoring, it is chargeable. Amazon CloudWatch gives complete visibility of your cloud resources and applications. This is chargeable. With Amazon CloudWatch, there is no upfront commitment or minimum fee. You simply pay for what you use. Basic monitoring comes with free tier. You can go to the paid tier as per the business needs. Let us go with default unchecked. Configure advanced details. RAM disk ID. Go with the default. User data. Any startup scripts you want to run. The default option is public IPs assigned to the instances launched in the default VPC. Other options like you can have public IP address to every instance or do not assign any instance. Let us go with default. Click next. Step 4 add storage. Let us go with the default selection. Click next. A security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance. We can create a new group or use an existing security group. Let us create a new security group. 
this rule is fine for us tcp port 22 ssh access from anywhere is fine for now let us click review it's warning us that security group is open and insecure it's okay for now so these are the options which are selected let us create launch configuration for accessing the aws instances we need a key pair we can choose from the existing key pair or create a new key pair select uh, existing key pair acknowledge create launch configuration now next step is create an auto scaling group using this launch configuration this is a five step process we are in step one configure auto scaling group details let us give a name group size or the desired capacity is the number of instances this group must have at any time let us go with two instances. VPC is Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. We can use the existing VPC or create a new one. We can go with the existing one. Let us use this. For the subnet, you can use the existing subnets or create a new subnet. Let us go with the existing subnets. And each instance in this auto scaling group will be assigned a public IP address. Advanced details. We can attach load balancer to this auto scaling group. Health check grace period is the time it will wait to check the health status. Default 300 seconds. Detail monitoring is not enabled for this. It's okay. This is to protect instances from termination and default service linked IEM role. Let us go with defaults. Click next to configure scaling policies. This is optional and we'll go with the default option. Keep this group at its initial size. Click next. You can configure auto scaling group to send notifications like launching of an instance, termination of an instance, fail to launch or fail to terminate. You can create a new topic. The email address where you want to receive these alerts. These notifications can be sent to only confirmed email addresses. Let us go with default. Let us go to the next step. Configure tags. Tag is a key value pay that can be used to identify this group. Leave it blank for now. Click review. These are the features that we have configured. No scaling policies, notifications now, tags now. Group size is 2, minimum size, maximum size 2. Let us create auto scaling group. Auto scaling group is successfully created. Let us view our auto scaling groups. This is launch configuration that we have created. This is the auto scaling group that is created. Let us see activity history. So two EC2 instances are created. These instances are created as per the desired capacity that we have set. Okay, let us see the instances. So we have two instances. The two instances are up and running. Let us name them. Let us go back to auto scaling. The actions that can be taken on this group are edit and delete this is activity history that we have seen that two instances are successfully created scaling policies we don't have one instances the same thing what we have seen from the amazon ec2 dashboard lifecycle status is both are in service the other lifecycle states are pending terminated or terminating detaching standby or entering standby this is launch configuration name availability zone and health status protection from scaling we have not opted let us test auto scaling how it works so we got desired capacity of two we can select any instance and we can click on detach detach will remove the instance from auto scaling group and from any associated load balances and this will replace the instance with new running instance to meet the desired capacity. 
it will replace only when you check this. Add a new instance to the auto scaling group. If you don't check this, the desired capacity will be reduced by 1. Let us delete the instance from EC2 dashboard. We have two running instances. Let us delete one and see what happens in auto scaling. Terminate. Click yes. Let us go to auto scaling groups. The default cooldown for the auto scaling group is 300 seconds. That is 5 minutes. So it takes about 5 minutes until you see the scaling activity. Let us pause and come back to this. This is monitoring. Notifications. Tags. Schedule actions. We can schedule an action to meet the dynamic capacity by configuring minimum and maximum and desired capacity and recurrence status and when to start. You can create one. You can create lifestyle hooks. This is to perform custom actions like instance launch or instance terminate. Action, abandon or continue. Let us check the instances still in service. Go back to EC2 dashboard. See, instance 2 is terminated. Auto scaling has provisioned another instance that is running. And let us check uh, activity history. So, terminating this instance, this instance is terminated, and auto scaling group launched another instance to meet the desired configured capacity. When you have more number of instances, you can check status, which are successful in progress and others. You can copy this launch configuration to a launch template and you can use the launch templates to create instances. Amazon EC2 dashboard launch. You have the option to launch from the template. As a final step, you don't want this auto scaling group or the instances. You need to remove the auto scaling group first. Let us do the cleanup. Delete auto scaling group. It will take a couple of minutes. Auto scaling pricing. Launch instance. Launch configurations and auto scaling groups. Create launch configuration in six steps. Auto scaling group is deleted. Let us delete launch configuration as well. Deleted. And let us go to EC2 dashboard. Deleting auto scaling group also deleted the instances. So these instances are terminated. Section Elastic Load Balancing, ELB. You achieve fault tolerance for any application by ensuring scalability, performance and security with AWS Elastic Load Balancing. You select Elastic Load Balancing under Compute. ELB automatically distributes incoming application traffic across multiple targets such as Amazon EC2 instances, containers and IP addresses. It can handle the varying load of your application traffic in a single availability zone or across multiple availability zones. AWS offers three types of load balancers, application load balancer, network load balancer and classic load balancer. All these feature high availability, automatic scaling, and robust security, which is necessary to make your application fall tolerant. Application Load Balancer is best suited for load balancing of HTTP and HTTPS traffic. Network Load Balancer is best suited for load balancing of TCP traffic. Classic Load Balancer provides basic load balancing. ELB makes applications highly available, secure, elastic, flexible, robust monitoring and auditing. These are use cases. 
Elastic Load Balancer can detect unhealthy targets, stop sending traffic to them, and then distribute the load across the remaining healthy targets. Security is achieved with Amazon VPC. You can have OSI Layer 4 Network Load Balancer or Layer 7 Application Load Balancer. These are the comparison features of all the three load balancers. Pricing With ELP, you only pay for what you use. This is the pricing of ELP by Region. Let us take a demo. Create an AWS account and sign into the console. This is AWS Management Console. Load balancer can be configured from Amazon EC2. Let us select EC2. We can also create load balancer with APIs or AWS CLI. You can use Amazon Elastic Load Balancing with Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling to build highly available and fault tolerant applications. On the left menu, let us select Load Balancers. Create Load Balancer. So let us select Application Load Balancer. This is a simple six step process. We are in step one, configure load balancer. Let us give a name to our load balancer. This name must be unique in an AWS account. Select the scheme, internet facing to route the request from clients over the internet to the targets. You select internal when you want to use it in your intranet. Let us go with Internet Facing. Select the IP address type. It can be IPv4 or dual stack, which is IPv4 and version 6, IPv6. Listener. A listener is a process that checks for connection requests using the protocol and the port you configure. You can add additional listener. SRTPS. Next, Availability Zones. Specify the Availability Zone to enable for our Load Balancer. The Load Balancer can route the traffic to the targets in the Availability Zones that are specified here. You can specify one subnet per Availability Zone and at least two Availability Zones to increase the availability of your Load Balancer. Let us select these two. Click next. Step 2. Configure security settings. We have selected HTTPS protocol as well. So we need to select the certificate information as well. For now, let us deselect HTTPS. We are in step 2. Configure security settings. It's warning us that our load balancer is not using any secure listener. HTTPS protocol is secure. So for now, let us go with the default HTTP. Click Next. Step 3. Configure security groups. A security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic to your load balancer. We can select from the existing group or create a new one. Let us create a new one. And we are defining the protocol TCP port 80 and source 0000 slash 0. This is default permit from anywhere. So let us go with this one for now. Step 4. Configure routing. Load balancer routes the request to the targets in the target group using the protocol and the port we specify. Let us give a name. Protocol 80 and the target type. It can be instances or the IP address. Let us go with instance and perform health checks on the targets using these health check settings. So protocol is HTTP and path is root. Let us see advanced health check settings. Port, traffic port. These are healthy threshold, unhealthy threshold, timeout, interval, success codes. Success code response from the target. Let us click next. Step 5. Register targets. 
list uh, targets with your target group for the load balancer to start routing requests to the targets. Right now we don't have any targets, instances. We'll add this later. Let us click review. Let us create. Load balancer is created. And traffic will be passed to this load balancer after the target registration process is completed and initial health checks are passed. Close. And this is the load balancer that is created. This is the target group. Let us create EC2 instances to register with target group and register the target group with load balancer. Let us go to EC2 dashboard. This is Amazon EC2 dashboard. Let us create EC2 instances. Click launch instance. Creating an Amazon EC2 instance is seven step process. Let us quickly create the instance. Let us select Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base, which is retire eligible. Select. This is general purpose t2.micro retire eligible instance type. Let us go with this. Next. Let us create two instances. The remaining leave default values. Let us click next. Let us go with default size for the root volume. Next. I'll leave it default. Next. We can select the existing security group or create a new one. So for the windows, we need RDP access. TCP 3389 is RDP port. Source from anywhere. It is 0000, 0000 is open. Let us review and launch. It's warning that our security group is open to the world and not secure. For now, it's fine. Let us click launch. We don't have any key pairs and let us create a new key pair. Let us download the key pair. Save this file. Launch instances. Instances are being launched. It will take a couple of minutes before they are ready in running state for us to use. Let us check the status. So they are ready. They are in running state. Health checks initializing. Give a minute more for them to be ready fully. Let us add these EC2 instances to the target group. Let us register the targets, the instances which were created. These two are the instances that were created. Let us click add to the registered. This status is unused. This is not attainable for the load balancer. Let us go to the load balancer. This is the listener port 80 forwarding to the target group which we have created. And we can associate this load balancer to an auto scaling group as well. Let us click auto scaling group. We can create an auto scaling group. This is in two step process. Create a launch template and then create a auto scaling group. You can configure a domain name pointing to the elastic load balancer. Please watch Amazon EC2 auto scaling group session for more info. Section Amazon light sale. Amazon light sale is center compute. Light sale is a virtual server that is cost effective, fast and reliable with an easy to use interface. You can try LightSail for free for one month. So these are the plans. Plans start from $3.5 a month. You can launch a virtual private server in just a few clicks. LightSail is available worldwide with 13 global regions and 38 availability zones. LightSail is available where your website or app needs to be. This is the pricing for the Linux, Unix. For Windows, it starts from $8 a month. 
Let's say plans include static IP address, DNS management, server monitoring, SSH terminal access for Linux and Unix, Intuitive management console, RDP access for Windows, and secure key management. You can try Lightsail for free. Let us get started. You create an AWS account and log into the console. So we have created an account and logged into the console. And this is AWS console. Lightsail is under compute and we can search as well. Let us select. We don't have any instances and let us create an instance. Instance location is automatically picked. We can change the region and availability zone. Pick the instance image. Let us select the platform, Linux. We can select a blueprint with customized software or we can select OS only. Let us select Amazon Linux. Amazon Linux AMI is supported and maintained Linux image provided by Amazon Web Services for use on Amazon EC2. Optionally, you can add a launch script. We can use default SSH key pair or create a new SSH key pair for connecting to our instance. Finally, select the instance plan. The first month free. Let us go with this. This is 3.5 USD. Comes with 512 MB RAM, 1 virtual CPU, 20 GB SSD storage and 512 GB transfer. So these are the other plans. Let us name our instance. This is auto-generated name. Let us keep it. It is provisioning. Yeah, it's ready. We can create the network resources like static IP, DNS zone and load balancer. Storage. So let us go with the default. We can create additional storage as well here. So this is uh, snapshots. This is our instance that is created and we can connect, manage, stop, reboot and delete as well. Let us connect to this instance. We are connected. We are connected through AWS CLI. Okay, let us close this. We can manage this instance. We can stop or reboot. Connect using SSH. And you can manage other parameters. This is system disk. You can add additional attached disks. Metrics so tab. Firewall rules are permitting SSH and HTTP load balances history this is the private IP and public IP that is assigned this is a simple deployment of instance in AWS cloud platform let us check Amazon EC2 dashboard the instance created is not part of Amazon EC2 and not reflecting in EC2 management console. So as a final step, when we don't need our instance anymore, let us stop it and delete it forever. So let us click delete. It's a warning. Okay, we clicked on stopping. So we need to wait for a few minutes. Our instance is stopped. So let us click delete instance. This is a warning. Click yes delete. It's deleted. These are some snapshots. Instance creation. It's on Amazon Web Services. Section AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is serverless computing. You run code without thinking about servers. Pay only for the compute time you consume. Pay only for what you use. AWS Lambda lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. With Lambda, 
With Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application or backend service. Just upload your code and Lambda will take care of everything required to run and scale your code with high availability. AWS Lambda is under compute. AWS Lambda is under compute. You don't need to manage any servers. Enjoy the benefit of auto scaling. You don't pay anything when your code is not running. You upload your code to AWS Lambda and set up your code to trigger from HTTP endpoints or in-app activity. AWS Lambda runs your code only when it is triggered. On triggering, AWS Lambda runs your code and just pay for the compute time you use. AWS Lambda finds place in real-time processing, real-time stream processing, and DTL, extract, transform, and load. AWS Lambda finds wide usage. It can automatically run code in response to multiple events such as HTTP requests via Amazon API Gateway, modification to S3 objects, table updates in DynamoDB, and state transitions in AWS step functions. These are the key product features. And let us see pricing. The Lambda free tier includes 1 million free requests per month and 400,000 GB seconds of compute time per month. Let us take a demo of AWS Lambda. This is AWS Management Console. Select Lambda under AWS Compute. This is the dashboard of AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda is running a code without provisioning or managing servers. Let us create a Hello World Lambda function and then invoke the Lambda function using a simple event data. Let us create a function or choose a pre-configured template as a blueprint for your Lambda function. There are many from which you can choose to meet your business needs. And we have another option that is to find and deploy the serverless applications published by AWS and AWS partners and other developers. You can choose from many which suits your business needs. Let us go to Blueprints. Let us select Hello World Sample Application. So we have these many. Let us select Hello World Python. Click Configure. So we need to configure the basic information like name and the roles. And this is the function code. Let us give a name. We can choose from the existing roles. So these are the roles we have. Let us select this. We can modify this code later after the creation of the function. Let us click create function. Our function is created. We can modify the code and configuration. We can create a test event to input the test event and test our function. Let us see the code. This is the code. Print some value and key pairs. This is the sample code here and you can upload a GIF file or a file from Amazon S3. For a bigger files, it's advised to use Amazon S3. Runtime is Python. If you are comfortable with any of the other runtimes, you can go for it. You can specify a handler, a method or a function in our code for AWS Lambda to begin executing our code. AWS Lambda provides event data as input to this handler, which processes the event. For this sample code, let us use this handler. We can define environment variables such as key value pairs that are accessible from our function code. These variables are useful to store settings without the need to change function code. We can use tags to group and filter our functions. Tags are key value pairs. Role is an IAM role. It defines the permission of your function. This role must have necessary permissions that AWS Lambda can access, invoke your Lambda function on your behalf. You can choose an existing role or create a new role or create a new role from templates or custom role. Let us go with existing role. Let it be default memory and the timeout options. 
So let us go with no VPC or select the default VPC. For this test function, we can go with no VPC. Leave debugging and error handling default dead letter Q DLQ resource. Leave default none. Let us go with the default unreserved account concurrency. Auditing and complaints using AWS CloudTrail logging. Let us leave default. Let us save the changes. Let us configure a test event and test our function. We are creating a test event to trigger our function. We are using Hello World template. Let us use Hello World template. Give a name. And let us change this to, let us give a value to key one and create. Let us test the event. So it printed the value. Summary, log output, logs generated. We can monitor our function. We can add any of these sources to trigger our function. It can be API Gateway, Cloud Friend, CloudWatch Events, CloudWatch Logs, Amazon S3 or SNS Topic. Let us add S3. Let us click Configuration. We'll select S3 bucket that serves as an event source and the event type to trigger our lambda function. It can be when object is created or when object is removed or any of these subtypes. Let us say when event type is object created in the bucket test bucket trigger our test function. Optionally, we can use the prefixes and suffixes to identify the notifications of these triggers. And Lambda will add necessary permissions for Amazon S3 to invoke our Lambda function from this trigger. Enable trigger, click add. In this bucket, when event type is object created, trigger this function. Don't forget to save these changes. Yeah, we have used this bucket elsewhere. So let us create a new bucket. Select S3. Let us create a bucket. Creating Amazon S3 bucket is in simple four steps. Let us give a name. The name must be unique across all the names in Amazon S3. Let us use default region. Let us click next. Let us use default options. Click next. Let us use default permissions, click next, review, create bucket. This is the bucket and we can add files. Let us drag this file, click next, default permissions, default properties, review, upload. Let us delete this and create a new trigger. Let us select the bucket which we have created and the event type object created and you can apply optionally prefixes and suffixes to identify notifications from these triggers and let us click add. Let us save. It's saved. Like this, you can use any of the sources to trigger our Lambda function. Monitoring our function. AWS Lambda monitors our functions and reports the metrics through Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon Lambda tracks the number of requests, latency per request, metrics are invocations, number of requests, duration, errors and availability, throttles, and these. We can view the related logs in the CloudWatch.
view traces in X-ray. AWS X-ray help developers analyze and debug applications. X-ray provides end-to-end -end view of the requests. We can use X-ray to analyze both applications in development from simple applications to complex microservices applications consisting of thousands of services. We don't have any traces as of now. With AWS Lambda, you pay only for what you use. When we don't need AWS Lambda function any longer, it's a best practice to delete it. Let us select this. We can view details, test, and delete. Click delete. OK. It's deleted. Let us delete another one as well. Done. Just having a function here is not chargeable. It's counted only when it is triggered from external sources. Charges are applied only on the number of invocations requires for this function. These are some snapshots. Section Amazon Elastic Container Service ECS using AWS Fogate. Elastic Container Service is under compute. Amazon Elastic Container Service ECS is highly scalable, high-performance container orchestration service that supports Docker containers. It allows you to easily run and scale containerized applications on AWS. It eliminates the need for you to install and operate your own container orchestration software, manage and scale a cluster of virtual machines, or schedule containers on those virtual machines. With simple API calls, you can launch and stop Docker-enabled applications, query the complete state of your application, and access many features. Amazon ECS is container management service to run, stop, and manage Docker containers on a cluster. Host your cluster on serverless infrastructure using the Fargate launch type, or host tasks on a cluster of Amazon EC2 instances using EC2 launch type. Create a consistent deployment and building experience, manage and scale batch and detail workloads, and build sophisticated application architectures on a microservices model. You can use Amazon ECS to schedule the placement of containers across your cluster based on your resource needs. Amazon ECS eliminates the need for you to operate your own cluster management and configuration management systems or worry about scaling your management infrastructure. Amazon ECS features AWS Fargate to deploy and manage containers without having to provision or manage servers. With Fargate, you no longer have to select Amazon EC2 instance types provision and scale clusters of virtual machines to run containers or schedule containers. Containerize everything. Amazon ECS lets you easily build all types of containerized applications from long-running applications and microservices to batch jobs and machine learning applications. Amazon ECS is highly secure as it launches your containers in your own VPC allowing you to use your own VPC security groups and network ACLs. Amazon ECS is highly scalable service, and it's very much integrated with all AWS services like ELB, VPC, IAM, CloudWatch, CloudFormation, etc. Build images and store using ECR or any other repository. This is Amazon ECS. Define your application and select suitable container images and resources needed for your application. Amazon ECS launch type determines the type of infrastructure on which your tasks and services will be hosted. There are two launch types. You can launch containers or Amazon EC2 
and this allows you to run your containerized applications on a cluster of Amazon EC2 instances that you manage. You can launch your containers on AWS Fogate. Fogate launch type allows you to run your containerized applications without the need to provision and manage the backend infrastructure. This is serverless infrastructure. Just register your task definition and Fargate launches the container for you. And then finally manage containers. Amazon ECS scales your application and manages your containers for availability. With AWS Fargate, you run containers without managing servers or clusters. AWS Fargate is a compute engine for Amazon ECS and EKS that allows you to run containers without having to manage servers or clusters. This is one of the two launch types, the other being EC2 launch type. So the workflow is build a container image, define the images for the Amazon ECS, select AWS Fargate launch type, which manages all of the underlying container infrastructure and launch containers. AWS Fargate runs your containers for you and you manage containers for application scalability and availability. AWS Fargate on Amazon ECS. Use AWS Fargate with Amazon ECS to run containers without having to manage servers or clusters of EC2. This is AWS Management Console. Let us select Elastic Container Service under Compute. Let us get started. You can run containers at scale. It's a flexible container placement and very well integrated and extensible service. Let us get started. Let us take a demo of Amazon ECS using Fargate. Amazon ECS architecture, it contains containers, task definitions, task scheduling, clusters, container agent, ECS objects and their relation to each other. We define the container here and the task definitions and the services and this as a whole cluster. To deploy applications on Amazon ECS, your application must be ready to run in containers. A Docker container is a standardized unit of software development containing everything that your software application needs to run, code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, etc. Containers are created from a read-only template called an image. Images are typically built from Docker file, a plain text file that specifies all the components that are included in the container. Fargate launch type supports using containers hosted in Amazon ECR or publicly on Docker Hub. Choose an image for your container to get started. You can define your own container image or define the container image to use. We can choose one of the image for our container or we can define our custom image. Let us go with sample app. Next is task definition. The task definition is a text file in JSON format that describes one or more containers that form your application. A task definition is a blueprint for your application and describes one or more containers through attributes. We have selected sample app and the task definition name. We can edit task definition. This is task definition name and the network mode AWS VPC network mode Docker networking mode AWS VPC task execution role let us go with this role compatibilities that is launch type now in this case it is Fargate task size allows you to size the task level and optionally set container specific CPU and memory sizes you are built for the task memory and task CPU allocated. Task memory 0.5 GB and task CPU 0.25 vCPU. This is fine for our demo. Let us save. Click next. Now in this demo, we are launching a sample web application using containers. Next step is define your service. 
A service allows you to run and maintain specified number of simultaneous instances of task definition in an ECS cluster. Service name, sample app service, number of desired tasks, one. It automatically creates a new security group and we can edit if you want. Define service. A service allows you to run and maintain a specific number of simultaneous instances of task definition in an ECS cluster. Let us edit this. Service name, sample app service, number of desired tasks, one. A security group is created to allow all public traffic to your service on the port specified in container. Let us go with the default options and port 80. Next is Elastic Load Balancing. Optionally, you can select ELB, Elastic Load Balancing. ELB distributes incoming traffic across tasks running in your service. Default option is None. And if you select ELB, the options are Load Balancer Listener Port 80 and Protocol HTTP. Click Advanced. L check path is Port 80, that is root. For now, let us go with none. Save. Click next. Now the final step, configure your cluster. The infrastructure in a Fargate cluster is fully managed by AWS. Your containers run without managing and configuring individual Amazon EC2 instances. Cluster name, let us go with this. VPC ID, automatically create new and subnets automatically create new let us go with the defaults click next let us review the configuration click create aws resources are being provisioned and may take a couple of minutes nine of nine services are complete let us view the service This is cluster info. This is the service name and this is task definition. This is the task and it's running. Metrics. We have created our container just so it will be a couple of minutes before this metrics appear here. And you can schedule tasks as well. This is the Amazon ECS cluster created using Fargate. This is the detailed view of resources on our cluster. Running task count 1 Fargate. In another session, we will be doing EC2 launch type. This is the sample service. This is the task. Auto scaling, deployments, metrics, logs. This is the task definition. View detailed information on our task definition. You can modify the task definition and make a new revision. Amazon Elastic Container Registry is a fully managed Docker container registry that makes it easy for developers to store, manage, and deploy Docker container images. Amazon Elastic Container Service Pricing. There are two launch types for Amazon ECS that we have seen. One is Fargate launch type model and another is EC2 launch type model. With Fargate, you pay for the amount of virtual CPU and memory resources that your containerized application requires. This is Fargate pricing. Per vCPU per hour 0.05 and per GB per hour 
0.0127 pressing is per second with a one minute minimum and the second one is easy to launch type model there is no additional charge for easy to launch type you pay for the AWS resources like EC2 instances or EBS volumes you create to store and run your applications. You only pay for what you use and there are no minimum fees and no upfront commitments. Okay, this is our cluster. When you don't need the service anymore, you free up the resources. To save on the billing, let us delete the cluster. Yes, we want to delete. It will take a couple of minutes. Let us come back to this after a while. Amazon EC2 pricing. Amazon ECS architecture. Amazon ECS dashboard. Getting started wizard. Yes, cluster is deleted. Let us delete this as well. Let us deregister this. It's in action now. Three EBS, EFS, Glacier, Snow Family and storage gateway. Cloud storage is a critical component of cloud computing, holding the information used by the applications. Big data analytics, data warehouses, IoT, databases, and backup and archive applications all rely on the data storage architecture. Cloud storage is more reliable, scalable, and secure than traditional on-premises storage systems. AWS offers complete range of cloud storage services to support both application and archival compliance requirements. Various products under AWS storage are Amazon S3, EBS, EFS, Glacier, and Snow Family, and Storage Gateway. These are the various products under storage. Let us have an overview of all the products and services. Amazon S3 is the flagship storage product of AWS. AWS S3 offers a range of storage classes designed for different use cases. Amazon S3 is object storage built to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. It is designed to deliver 11 nines of durability and stores data for millions of applications used by market leaders in every industry. S3 provides comprehensive security and compliance capabilities. Amazon S3 offers a range of storage classes designed for different use cases. These include general purpose Amazon S3 standard, infrequent access, S3 one zone infrequent access, and Archive class, that is Amazon Glacier. Amazon S3 standard offers high durability, availability and performance object storage for frequently accessed data. It delivers low latency and high throughput. S3 lifecycle management offers configurable policies to automatically migrate objects to the most appropriate standard class. S3 standard IA, infrequent access. This storage class is for the data that is accessed less frequently, but requires rapid access when needed. It offers the same features as S3 standard. There is a retrieval fee per GP is associated with this. This class is used for long-term storage, backups, and as a data store for disaster recovery. S3 lifecycle policies are applicable to automatically transition objects between storage classes without any application changes. S3 one zone IA stores data in a single availability zone. Because of this, this cause 
20% less than storing it on S3 standard IE. This is a low cost option for infrequently accessed data and do not require the availability and resilience. Amazon Glacier is the final archival destination for the data. Amazon Glacier is secure, durable and extremely low cost storage service for data archiving. It is economical than on-prem solutions. Amazon Glacier further provides three options for access to archives from few minutes to several hours. Amazon Glacier supports S3 lifecycle policies for automatic migration between S3 and Amazon Glacier storage classes. Amazon Elastic Block Store Persistent Block Storage for Amazon EC2 Elastic Volumes is a feature that dynamically increase or decrease the capacity tune performance and change the type of any new or existing volumes with no downtime performance impact. Just you need to create a volume as per today's needs and scalability is achieved with the Elastic Block Store saving time. Saving upfront to capex. The benefits which you have seen EBS volumes provide redundancies and secure storage. Consistent and low latency performance. Protect data by backing up the snapshots of EBS volumes and restore the volumes when needed. Highly scalable up or down as per the changing needs of your business. Geographic flexibility for data center migration and disaster recovery. And all this comes with optimized performance. Use cases are RDBMS like Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, which are deployed widely on Amazon EBS. And you can quickly provision, duplicate, scale, or archive your development, test, and production environments. For the applications running with NoSQL databases, Amazon EBS offers consistent and low latency performance. And Amazon EBS made assured business continuity. Amazon EBS volume times are basically SSD backed storage for transactional workloads such as databases and boot volumes and HDD backed storage for throughput intensive workloads such as MapReduce and log processing. Amazon EBS provides the ability to save point in time snapshots of your volumes to Amazon S3. Let us sign into the console. Amazon S3. This is Amazon S3 dashboard. Please watch the session on Amazon S3 for creating a bucket and managing the life cycle of a bucket. EBS. Elastic block store volumes are attached to EC2. We can create from EC2 dashboard. This is EC2 dashboard. We can create volumes here. We can specify the volume type, size, IOPS, and availability zone and the snapshot with which to create this volume and encryption. Then create, volume is successfully created. Let us see. And we can attach this volume to any application or any instance. Let us check. Let us select uh, Linux, Amazon Linux CMI. Let us go with t2.micro. Next, for the AMI selected, EBS size of minimum 8 GB for the root volume is suggested here. Free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 GB of EBS general purpose SSD or magnetic storage. Let us see how much. If you select Windows AMI, 
Let us see what EPS volume is recommended for the windows. Click next. Next. It is recommending 30 GB of EPS volume for the root here. The next one is Elastic File System EFS. Amazon EFS provides simple, scalable, elastic file storage for use with AWS cloud services and on-prem resources. This is pricing and under free tier, you can use up to 5 GB per month for free. These are some snapshots. Amazon EFS file system is seamlessly integrated with your existing applications and tools. Multiple Amazon EC2 instances and applications can access an Amazon EFS file system at the same time. Mount Amazon EFS file systems on your on-premises data center servers to migrate datasets to EFS or back up your on-premises data to EFS. These are the Amazon EFS benefits. These are the Amazon EFS use cases. Amazon EFS finds place in mission critical applications and enterprise applications. This is AWS console. Let us search by EFS. This is Amazon Elastic File System dashboard. Create Amazon file system to store your files in the Amazon cloud. The file system dynamically scales up or down as per the business need. And you pay only for what you use. You can easily read and write files from Amazon EFS file system. And you can easily manage your file system using Amazon EFS console, CLI and SDK. Let us create Amazon EFS file system. It is in simple three steps. We can use the default VPC. Amazon EFS file system is accessed by EC2 instances in one of your VPCs. And instances connect to your file system by using mount targets you create. And these are the mount targets. Let us keep default. Click next. These are the optional settings, adding tags, performance mode, throughput, enable encryption of data at rest. Next step, review and create. These are the options which you have selected. Let us create. So we have created a file system and this is ready for mounting in Amazon EC2 instance. And you can use this file system for accessing from Amazon EC2 instance or from on-premises server or Amazon DC connection. On the selected EFS, these are the actions that can be taken. EFS file sync provides a fast and simple way of synchronizing data from existing on-premises servers into Amazon EFS file systems. Please watch Amazon EFS demo session. Amazon Glacier is secure, durable and extremely low-cost cloud storage service for data archiving and long-term backup. It provides living lines of durability and offers comprehensive security and compliance capabilities. These are Amazon Glacier benefits. Quick data retrievals, high durability and scalability. AWS services are supported by tens of thousands of consulting, system integrator, independent software vendors and partners. These are some use cases of Amazon Glacier. You have petabytes of data and no worries, you can archive the data into Amazon Glacier. In every organization, data keeps growing and Amazon Glacier shows the way for archiving. Amazon Glacier offers affordable archiving. We can apply lifecycle management for automatic migration of objects in various storage classes. 
let us search by glacier we need to create a vault which is a container for storing archives an archive is any object such as photos videos documents etc which you want to store in a vault and we can set data retrieval policies and set event notifications let us click create vault this is a simple four step process we can upload single file or multiple files in compressed format let us give a name set event notifications do not enable notifications is default and these are the other options let us click next now submit let us see data retrieval settings default option is no retrieval limit and the charges are applicable and this is glacier pricing under free usage tier we can retrieve up to 10 gb of amazon glacier data per month for free storage pricing per gb per month retrieval pricing per gb retrieval request pricing per thousand requests provision expedited retrieval costs data transfer pricing per gb and you can use simple monthly calculator for assessing the cost free tier retrieval cost is free but subjected to conditions and the limits expedited retrieval requests are served by the provision capacity vault log policies for compliance requirements Amazon Snow family comprises Snowball, Snowball Edge, and Snowmobile. These are physical devices to migrate data into and out of AWS. Comparing the members of Snow family, Snowball Edge is 100 TB, and Snowmobile moves up to 100 petabytes of data, which is equivalent to 1250 Snowball devices. It's a 45 feet long shipping container and ideal for multi petabyte or exabyte scale digital media migrations and data center shutdowns. And data is encrypted. Max job length is 90 days to 360 days. Next product in the storage is Storage Gateway. AWS Storage Gateway is hybrid storage service that enables your on-premises applications to seamlessly use AWS Cloud Storage. This storage gateway service can be used for backup and archiving, disaster recovery, cloud data processing, storage tiring, and migration. These are the benefits. These are the use cases. These are the gateway types, file gateway, volume gateway, and tape gateway. Let us select Storage Gateway. Storage Gateway helps to manage your workloads in and out of AWS Cloud Storage. You can backup and archive to AWS and benefit from tiered storage in AWS. Let us get started. Creating gateways through simple five steps. Select the gateway type, file gateway, volume gateway, or tape gateway. Select host platform, and next connect to gateway, activate gateway, and configure local disks. We'll take a demo on this in another session. We have seen various AWS Cloud Storage products. Here is the suggestion or recommendation when to use on web services. Section Amazon S3 Simple Storage Service Amazon S3 is scalable storage in the cloud. It is object storage built to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. This is the web page of Amazon S3. We have so many benefits. These are the use cases. Some of the AWS S3 benefits are 
It has unmatched durability, availability and scalability. It is designed to deliver living nines of durability. It has most comprehensive security and compliance capabilities. Amazon S3 allows you to run sophisticated big data analytics. You can query anything in place. You can run SQL on-demand queries to access vast amounts of unstructured data. Amazon S3 offers the most flexible set of storage management and administration capabilities. Amazon S3 is supported by tens of thousands of consulting, system integrator and independent software vendor partners. Transferring data is easy and flexible. You can choose from widest range of options to transfer your data in and out of Amazon S3. AWS S3 Use Cases Backup and Recovery Amazon S3 offers a highly durable, scalable and secure destination for backing up and archiving of your critical data. Amazon S3 and Amazon Glacier provide range of storage classes for data archiving. Amazon S3 can be used as your data lake for big data analytics. AWS Storage Gateway helps you build hybrid cloud storage. And Amazon S3 provides high performance, highly available storage that makes it easy to scale and maintain cost effective mobile and internet based apps. Amazon S3 provides cloud native application data for high performance. Amazon S3 offers a robust disaster recovery solution designed to provide superior data protection. Let us take AWS S3 demo. Log into Amazon S3 console. Create S3 bucket or container which is object placeholder. Upload and retrieve files. And finally, delete the objects and S3 bucket. Let us log into the console. And you can access S3 by searching here or from the services drop down under storage, select S3. This is Amazon S3 dashboard. Some buckets are already there. And for S3, it doesn't require a region selection. S3 is global. Let us create a bucket. Creating a bucket is in simple four steps. Bucket name must be DNS compliant, unique across all existing bucket names in Amazon S3. Let us give a name CBT bucket1 and let this be in the default region. If you want, we can copy settings from any of the existing buckets. Let this be default. We don't want to copy. Click next. S3 has versioning capabilities. It will retain all the versions of an object. Let us not check this for now. We can do the server access logging. It will log all the access requests to your bucket. And we can enter tags. We can enable AWS Cloud Trail object level logging and this is chargeable. Let us go with default encryption. If you want, you can enable monitoring requests for CloudWatch metrics. Let us go with defaults, click next, permissions. And by default, owner has got all the permissions. You can give access to these objects to another AWS account. You can add account here and you can manage public permissions. By default, it doesn't grant public read access and permissions do not grant Amazon S3 log delivery group let us go with Manage System Permissions Default. Now let's review and create a bucket. S is created, bucket name, access type not public, region, and the date when it's created. Let us select this. Buckets are globally unique containers for all the objects that you store in Amazon S3. You can upload your files, it can be documents, photos, videos, or anything. The default permissions set for all the objects are private, and you can manage object access through access control policies to grant permissions to others. Let us create a folder. For the encryption, let us use bucket settings with the default encryption, and these are the other options. Let us save. 
we have created a folder in the bucket. Let us upload files. Let us drag and drop files here. We have three files here. Let us drag here. This is the target path. And next, let us set permissions. Let us go with the default permissions. And the property configurations storage class is standard encryption is none but it will inherit bucket settings let us go with default and metadata and tags can be entered here click next done let us click on upload okay we have uploaded three files here when you select an object, it will show the properties. What is the link to access? Let us copy this link. This gives the error access denied. This is expected and we have not made this public. It is for the private access only. And you can download. On the selected objects in the S3 storage, you can apply these actions here. You can change encryption, change metadata, and you can make public as well from here. Let us click this. So this is cautioning that everyone will have access to this file. Let us click on this. Let us copy the path. It is accessible as it is made public now. These are the properties of the bucket. We can keep multiple versions of an object in the same bucket by versioning. We can set up access logs. We can host a static website which doesn't need any dynamic content, database or require server-side technologies. And we can do object level logging as well. All these are disabled and we can enable as per our need. These are the advanced settings. Request of base is very good feature. You upload some content like soft copy of your copyrighted document or image or anything else. And when you share the link with the requester, then requester will pay for the request and the data transfer. These are the permissions that you can set and you can give access for other AWS accounts. If you want to enable access for everyone that is public access, you check here. And users can list objects or write objects. You check the options. Log delivery. This is access control list ACLs. Bucket policies. And you can create your JSON based access policy. and management, the life cycle. When you add the objects to S3, you can set the rules to manage your objects. You can automatically transition the objects to tired storage, to the standard infrequent access or to the Amazon Glacier storage class for archiving purpose. You can configure the policies to automatically expire the objects based on the data retention needs of your organization. You can configure the cross-region replication, storage analytics, the various metrics. Inventory reports. You can create a lifecycle rule. Let us configure transition for previous versions. Configure expiration after 365 days and other features you can review. Scope of this rule is for the old bucket. And expiration policy says permanently delete after 365 days. You can save and it be applied. Once you create, you can enable disable the lifecycle policies. These are some of the snapshots captured. Creating a bucket, 
configuring options setting up permissions review this is bucket dashboard create a folder add files set permissions set properties review upload the properties of the object and the actions that can be applied on the object we have copied the object link and try to access by default object is for private access you enable public access for the bucket now you can access the object which was access denied before it's a best practice to delete any AWS resource when they are not needed any longer. Let us click on delete bucket. To avoid accidental bucket deletion, it will ask you to enter the bucket name. Click confirm. It's deleted. Let us delete this as well. It's done. This is section Amazon CLI and IAM. Amazon CLI is unified tool to manage your AWS services. You can control multiple AWS services from command line, automate them through scripts. You can manage file transfers to and from Amazon S3. This is the web page of AWS CLI. It's a powerful tool to manage all the AWS resources. EC2, Amazon S3. It can list all the contents of your S3 bucket and you can perform file transfer operations. You can download and run the Windows installer. You save the file. It is downloaded. AWS CLI is open source tool built on top of AWS SDK for Python that provides with minimal configuration, you can start using all of the functionality provided by the AWS Management Console from the AWS CLI. On the Windows, you can run the commands in either PowerShell or the Windows command processor. This is the command prompt. We have installed AWS CLI and that works from the command prompt. We can access AWS from here. We need to configure AWS CLI to work with the AWS resources. We need AWS IAM account to access AWS resources from CLI. Let us create an IAM user to access AWS resources from here. You can access IAM from the recently visited services or from security, identity and complaints are from services by selecting IAM under security identity and complaints. We have some users here. This is the dashboard of identity and access management. So let us create a user. And we have two access types. One is programmatic access. This enables an access ID and secret access key for the AWS API, CLI, SDK under the development tool. And the second one is for management console access. The user can have one or the both. You can configure the console password, let it be auto-generated. Require password reset on first sign-in. So this is a good security feature. For now, let us disable this. Let us click next. We can add this user to a group and let us attach existing policies directly to this user. Let us attach administrator access and click next. Let us review. The username is this, access type, both programmatic and uh, management console access. Let us click on create user. Yes, the user is created. And we got access key ID. This is required to configure AWS CLI. And you can click on sending these instructions to the user. This is one time configuration. It is showing a different key ID. So let us copy this. And access key. 
default region let it be default output format let it be default let us display the buckets these are the buckets in our s3 folder let us create a bucket these are the buckets in my s3 let us create a bucket let us go with the defaults let us list the buckets again we have listed the bucket here let us upload a few files to this let us upload a file to this bucket next let us go with default permissions it's done let us list the objects in our bucket okay you can upload the files to aws s3 and you can download from there as well let us upload a file to aws s3 amazon s3 cp we have a file oh it's a png file the upload is successful let us refresh this page yes we got it let us download this lotus to local system So now the command is AWS S3 copy from S3 CBT bucket and the object and the local path. The local path is demo. Let's enter. Yes, it's downloaded. Okay. These are some of these snapshots. This is the link for CLI, the links for the installers and the reference commands for the CLI. You can list, display, upload, and you can perform lot many options through CLI. This is IAM page. AWS lists best practices to help IT professionals and developers manage access to AWS resources. Create users, create groups, manage permissions with groups, grant least privilege permissions, turn on AWS Cloud Trail for auditing purpose, configure a strong password policy, enable multi-factor authentication, use IAM roles for Amazon EC2 instances for additional security, use IAM roles to share access, rotate security credentials regularly, Restrict privileged access further with conditions. Reduce or remove use of root. These are the best practices. When you create IAM users, by default, it will provide the sign-in link like this. You can customize the link like this with a friendly name always. Let us go to IAM. This is customized sign-in page and we have already customized so it's asking whether we should delete click yes now back to this link we can customize this click cbtu new create this will be the user friendly sign-in link for the iam users this is security status snapshot you can use account id or alias I am username password to log into the console. This is for adding I am users, creating a group, adding users to the group. Access advisor is also available for us. 
attach existing policies we attached administrator access for the user created this is the access id and secret key this is required to configure aws cli to access aws resources you have to check this for aws management console access for the iam user this is aws configure object properties in s3 bucket file uploads listing s3 objects and uploading files uploading files from local system to s3 bucket downloading files from s3 to local system adding user for the management console changing the password on first time login and this is the console for the hello m3 from cbtu cbtu presents a course on amazon web services section amazon route 53 dns service amazon route 53 is scalable domain name system dns under network and content delivery in amazon production services Amazon Route 53 is a highly available and scalable cloud DNS service. DNS system translates domain names to numeric IP addresses that can be found and routed over the internet. Amazon Route 53 connects user requests to infrastructure running in AWS such as Amazon EC2 instances, Elastic Load Balancer or Amazon S3 buckets. Amazon Route 53 can be used to configure DNS health checks to route traffic to any healthy endpoint. AWS Route 53 also offers domain name registration that you can purchase and manage domains. These are the features. Let us sign into the console. This is AWS Management Console. Under Network and Content Delivery, select Route 53 or search for Route 53 here. Amazon Route 53 is powerful DNS system. You can do DNS management, traffic management, availability monitoring, and you can buy the domains as well. Let us say we have a domain name and we want to use Amazon Route 53 DNS management services. Amazon Route 53 is an authoritative domain name system DNS service. We have created a subdomain cbtu.canbit.com. Let us create a hosted zone for this subdomain. This is Amazon Route 53 dashboard. So let us use DNS service of Amazon Route 53. Click get started. Create hosted zone. A hosted zone is a container that holds information about all the record sets of a domain. It specifies how to route the traffic for the domain. Domain name cbtu can be dot com test hosted zone type it can be public hosted zone or private hosted zone let us keep public hosted these are the record sets that are created type ns and type soa this is the detail for the ns record name server record I need to make DNS entries for this domain pointing to these DNS values. This is a SOA record. Let us create mail MX entry, mail exchange. Let us say mail dot can be dot com priority 10. Routing policy, keep it simple. We need to make two entries for the MX. Let us say 20, the next one, mail 1, mail 2, create. This is the MX entry that is created. Any mails that come to cbtu.canbit.com will be diverted to these mail servers and web pages will be diverted to this DNS to fetch the web pages hosted on these web servers. We can create health checks. Route 53 health checks monitor the health and performance of your application servers 
endpoints from a network of health checkers from many locations around the world. You can specify either a domain name or an IP address or a port to create HTTP, HTTPS and TCP health check that check the health of the endpoint. So basically it's availability and performance monitoring. Let us create a health check. Let us name it as CBTU can CBTU one endpoint. Monitor an endpoint. Specify the endpoint by IP address or the domain name. Let us select domain name, port 80, the web service. You check for the root page or specify any path. Advanced configuration options. Request interval standard is 30 seconds, fast is 10 seconds. Failure threshold 3. String matching, latency patterns, invert health check status. Health checker regions. You can customize or use the recommended ones that are below. This is the URL that is going to be checked. Health check type is basic, no additional options selected. Let us see the pricing. This is the pricing. This is Amazon Route 53 pricing for the hosted zone and for the queries, for alias queries, for traffic flow, for hull checks, HTTPS, string matching, fast interval. As per the business needs, you may configure your health check. So the action to be taken, get notified when health check fails, create an alarm, let us create a new topic. We can give a topic name and the email address, recipient where you want to send the alert. Then we are ready to create a health check. Once you update the name server details with the registrar, you may check for the entries. The current DNS record for the parent domain. Name server information will take 24 hours to 48 hours for propagation around the globe. Traffic Flow Visual Editor helps in creating routing configurations for your resources using existing routing types such as failover and geolocation. DNS request type A, primary, secondary for the failover rule, weighted rule preference, weight 90 for the high priority and the endpoint will be specifying. You can create traffic policies here. We don't have any policy records to my name. We can use Route 53 domain name service for registering a new domain. You can choose a domain name and this is the pricing for the domain. This pricing varies from registrar to registrar and this is most economical pricing. You can enter the domain name and check it. Just we are testing it. So this is available and you can add to the cart and go for the purchase. This is the price per year. In the second step, you can enter the contact details for the restaurant, admin and the billing. And in the third step, you can verify and go ahead for the purchase. And as a best practice, when you don't need the resources anymore, do the cleanup. We have a hosted zone here. We have three record sets. Let us delete this record set. Back to hosted Jones. Delete. Amazon Route 53 pricing is pay only for what you use and there's no minimum fee. Estimate your monthly billing using AWS Simple Monthly Calculator. Thanks for watching. Hello, I am Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services. Section AWS Databases. AWS Databases are purpose built databases for all your application needs. The applications may need databases to store terabytes to petabytes of new types of data. Provide access to data with low latency, process millions of requests per second, and scale to support millions of users anywhere in the world.
To support these requirements, you need both relational and non-relational databases that are purpose-built to handle the specific needs of your applications. AWS offers broad range of databases, Amazon RDS, it is managed relational database service for MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle SQL Server, and MariaDB. Amazon Aurora, high performance managed relational database. Amazon DynamoDB, it's a managed NoSQL database. Amazon Elastic Cache, in memory caching service. Amazon Neptune, fully managed graph database service. Amazon Redshift is simple and cost-effective data warehousing and AWS comes with data migration service with minimal downtime. AWS offers fully managed database services which includes relational databases for transactional applications and non-relational databases for internet scale applications a data warehouse for analytics, an in-memory cache store for caching and real-time workloads, and a graph database for building applications with highly connected data. AWS Data Migration Service is simple and cost-effective. Amazon Aurora is a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. Aurora performance and availability of commercial-grade databases at one-tenth of the cost. Aurora features a distributed fault-tolerant self-failing storage system that auto-scales up to 64 TB per database instance. Aurora delivers high performance and availability. If you are currently using Amazon RDS for MySQL, migrating to Aurora is a simple cakewalk. MySQL and PostgreSQL databases Running on Amazon EC2 or on-premises can be easily migrated. AWS Schema Conversion Tool simplifies migration from any database to Amazon Aurora. You can migrate from these databases to Amazon RDS for MySQL or Amazon Aurora and these databases. The AWS Schema Conversion Tool can help migrate your database to the database platform of your choice. You can use this wizard which has 5 simple steps for data migration project. Source can be any of these database and configure all the parameters and you can run the database migration project. Amazon Relation Database Service, Amazon RDS is easy to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. It provides cost-efficient and resizable capacity with automation of administration tasks. Amazon RDS is available on several database instance types, optimized for memory, performance, or I.O. Provides familiar database engines to choose from, including Amazon Aurora, PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. It's easy to migrate and replicate existing databases to Amazon RDS using AWS database migration service. Amazon DynamoDB is non-relational database for applications that need performance at any scale. It is fully managed, multi-region, multi-master database that provides consistent low latency DynamoDB includes many features to help developers create a globally scalable data store for modern applications that require highly responsive data access. Amazon Elastic Cache offers fully managed Redis and Memcached. Amazon Elastic Cache is a popular choice for gaming, ad tech, financial services, healthcare, and IoT apps. The Amazon Elastic Cache engines are Elastic Cache for Redis, Elastic Cache for Memcached. Amazon Neptune is a fast, reliable, fully managed graph database service that makes it easy to build and run applications with highly connected datasets. Neptune efficiently stores and navigates highly connected data. Its query processing engine is optimized for leading graph query languages.
Nibshin is secure with support for encryption at rest. Amazon Redshift is a fast, scalable data warehouse that makes it simple and cost-effective to analyze all your data across your data warehouse. Redshift delivers 10 times faster performance than any other data warehouses by using machine learning, massively parallel query processing, and columnar storage on high-performance disk. You can set up and deploy new data warehouse in minutes and run queries across petabytes of data in your Redshift data warehouse. This is the Redshift dashboard and you can launch a cluster from here. AWS Data Migration Service helps you migrate databases to AWS quickly and securely. The source database remains fully operational during migration, minimizing downtime to applications that rely on the database. AWS Database Migration Service can migrate your data to and from most widely used commercial and open source databases. This is set of wizard of AWS Database Migration Service. DMS tasks require at least a source, a target, and replication instance. Data is replicated from a source to a target database by a task running on replication instance. AWS Schema Conversion Tool SCT is a standalone application that provides a project-based user interface. SCT is available for almost all the platforms. AWS Schema Conversion Tool supports Oracle Database to Amazon Aurora, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. Oracle Data Warehouse can be migrated to Amazon Redshift. Microsoft SQL Server can be migrated to Amazon Aurora and these databases. We'll be covering some of the databases in the coming sessions. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services, section Amazon RDS for MySQL. Amazon RDS is fully managed relational database service we have these databases under Amazon RDS and Amazon Redshift is a data warehouse and these are non-relational databases Amazon DynamoDB which is based on key value pairs and we have other databases here. MySQL is the world's most popular open source relational database and Amazon RDS makes it easy to set up, operate and scale MySQL deployments in the cloud with economy and resizable hardware capacity. Amazon RDS for MySQL manages time-consuming database administration, tasks including backup, software patching, monitoring, scaling, and replication. Amazon RDS for MySQL database instances are pre-configured with the parameters and settings. Amazon RDS for MySQL is fast and predictable storage and offers automated backup and recovery. Let us get into the demo. The steps in all are sign up for an AWS account, log into Amazon RDS console, select MySQL engine and create database instance. Now, to access the MySQL database, install SQL client, MySQL workbench to connect to the database instance. Next, manage import and export data in and out of MySQL database. As a final step, clean up RDS database instance when it is not required anymore. Let us select RDS under database or search for it. This is Amazon RDS dashboard. This will show all the RDS resources at glance. Let us create a database. We have different engine options. Amazon Aurora is MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. This combines the performance and availability of high-end commercial databases with simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases. Amazon Aurora is much faster than standard MySQL databases. These are the features for this. Let us select MySQL engine. 
We have got options to select other database engines as per our need. Let us check this to enable options eligible for RDS free access tier. Amazon Aurora is not eligible for free tier. But there is economical pricing that is associated with this. One may go for Amazon Aurora for the production workloads for high performance. Let us select MySQL. Click Next. Amazon Simple Monthly Calculator is a great tool to estimate the monthly cost of all the AWS resources. We are in step 2, specify DB details, DB engineers, MySQL community edition, license model, it's general public license, DB engine version, let us go with default version. AWS is always awesome. Amazon RDS free tier provides a single db.t2.micro instance as well as up to 20 GB of storage for practice for gaining hands-on experience with Amazon RDS. DB instance class db.t2.micro that comes with one virtual CPU and one GB of RAM. This is good for practice. Multi-availability zone deployment. So we don't have this option. No problem. Let us go to the next storage type general purpose SSD. Good. Allocated storage 20 GB. And settings database instance identifier. Let us give a name to DB instance identifier. Master username, password. Let us click next to configure advanced options. Network and security. Let us create a new VPC for our instance. Let us create a new DB subnet group as well. Public accessibility. Click yes. Our instance can be accessed from outside. VPC group settings. Create a new VPC group. Database name. Leave default port for TCP IP for MySQL database. Leave defaults for DB parameter group and option group. IMDB authentication. Leave default option of disable. Encryption is grayed out for our instance. No problem. Backup. Automated backups are supported and uh, you can specify the backup retention period. Default 7 days is selected. So let this be default. Backup window. You can select a window. Let us leave the default no preference. Monitoring. Leave default option of disable enhanced monitoring. If you enable it, it's chargeable. Log exports. This IAM role is used for publishing logs to CloudWatch logs. Maintenance. Disable upgrades. Maintenance window. Leave no preference. Now click create database. The instance is being created. It will take a couple of minutes. Let us view DB instance details. It is creating. It will take a couple of minutes before it turning into running status for us to use. Meanwhile, let us install MySQL client, MySQL workbench to access this MySQL database. These are some snapshots. MySQL Workbench can be downloaded from this link and you select the operating system and download the installer. Install MySQL Workbench. There are some prerequisites for this workbench to work. Download them and install. MySQL Workbench provides an integrated tools environment for database design and modeling. SQL development, database administration, and the database migration. Let us go back to the AWS Management Console to see the status. Our database is ready and uh, status is available. These are the details. CloudWatch metrics, security groups, endpoint, Replication info, snapshots, logs, 
So let us copy this endpoint. This is required to connect from MySQL client. This is MySQL workbench. Manage connections. Let us paste endpoint here. The host name. Default port. Username and password. Password is stored in vault and it will not ask unless it is changed. Let us go with default schema and test connection. Let us test connection. Let us use standard TCP IP connection method and test connection. Connection is successfully made. Let us connect to the database. Standard connection method. Storing password in the vault and it will not ask for the password until it is changed. Let us use default schema. Click OK. It's connected. This is server status. It's green, it's running. You can export, you can import, you can select the database to export, export to where. You can import the database from the database terms that you have. This is the database that you have created. InnoDB is the default storage engine. UnoDB is the database that you have created. You can manage the database from here. Okay. We have created MySQL instance and we connected to this database instance and connection was successful. You can further manage the database. This instance can be modified. Any major modifications, the database will be rebooted and it will impact any current connections. You can reboot. Take a snapshot from here and you can restore from S3 as well. You can create a database and add to this cluster, performance insights, snapshots. We have one that is available. You can take a snapshot. Reserved instances. You can purchase reserved DB instances from here with upfront or no upfront fees. Let us select uh, product description MySQL, DB instance class, let us select uh, db.m3.medium and multi availability zone deployment, click now. Term, one year and three years, let us say one year. Offering type, no offering fee. Number of DB instances one and the cost per hour is 0 0.065 USD. Hourly cost is 0 0.065 multiplied by 24 hours a day multiplied by 365 days in a year. This cost 569 USD. With all of front fees, we will be paying 476 USD. There is saving of $93 with one time of friend payment. Subnet groups. Enhanced monitoring is disabled. If enable it is chargeable. When you are done with the instance and don't need it anymore, delete the instance. Create a final snapshot. Let us say no. Acknowledge and type a phrase. Click delete. It will take a couple of minutes to delete all the resources. So back to our presentation. Creating a database, selecting MySQL. Connecting to MySQL database instance with MySQL Workbench. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services. Section Amazon DynamoDB. No SQL database. Amazon DynamoDB is non-relational database 
that delivers reliable performance at any scale. It is fully managed, multi-region, multi-master database that offers high performance built-in security, backup security, backup and restore, and in-memory caching. These are the benefits of Amazon DynamoDB. Performance at scale, it's fully managed and enterprise ready. Some of the use cases are serverless web applications, microservices data store, mobile backends, ad tech, gaming, and IoT. Amazon DynamoDB help developers create a globally scalable data store for modern applications that require high responsive data access. These are the features. Pricing. Pay only for the resources DynamoDB provisions to achieve your target read and write capacity. DynamoDB will auto-scale your capacity based on the usage. Under free tier, we get 25 GB per month of data storage and 200 million requests per month and these other offerings. These are the various pricing information. Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service. So let us take a demo. Let us create and query a NoSQL database. In this demo, we will be creating a table called PeopleDB, Add and Query Items, and Monitor and Manage Tables. You create an AWS account and sign into the console. This is AWS Management Console. DynamoDB is under Database. Select this. This is Amazon DynamoDB Console. We can create tables, add and query items, and monitor manage tables. Let us create a table. DynamoDB is a schema-less database that only requires a table name and a primary key. The table's primary key is made up of one or more attributes, uniquely identify items, partition the data, and sort data with each partition. Let us give a name. Primary key, partition key, let us say country. And the data type is uh, string. The partition key is the primary key. To uniquely identify the data and to enable easy sorting, add a sort key. Let us say language. Type string is fine. Is the basic minimum information. We can go ahead to create the DynamoDB table with the default settings. Default settings provide the fastest way to get started with your table. So default settings are, let us uncheck this. No secondary indexes. This is provision capacity and auto scaling. DynamoDB auto scaling will change the read and write capacity of your table based on the request volume. This is the target utilization, minimum provision capacity, maximum provision capacity. DynamoDB auto scaling service link control will be created. Encryption at rest. This is to help protect data at rest. So leave default. Let us go with the default settings. Let us go ahead to create the table. This is the table that is created. There is one open issue. Let us see what it is. This is some AWS infrastructure announcement. I'm not having any resources in US West. So no issues not affected with this. This is personal health dashboard. So we are back to DynamoDB. This is the table that is created, auto scaling disabled. So this is items tab. You can create an item here. You 
USA and language English add another item France French this is the data we have added and we can scan or query the data let us select query let us say partition key USA and sort key language English and start search this is one record this has scanned the entire table and has presented with the results we can apply these actions on this data like you can duplicate, edit, delete or export to CSV or manage detail time to leave let us delete let's delete let us check these other tabs metrics this is all CloudWatch metrics throttle read requests streams information we got extensive CloudWatch metrics information these are the alarms that are configured we can create additional alarms as well select SNS topic conditions you specify to send a notification to the SNS topic provision capacity read 5 units and write 5 units auto scaling if you make any changes save them this is indexes information we don't have any this is about the global table we can enable point in time recovery DynamoDB maintains a continuous backups of your table for the last 35 days on demand backup and restore you can create and restore a complete backup of your DynamoDB table data and its settings at any time. DynamoDB triggers connect to DynamoDB streams to Lambda functions. Whenever an item in the table is modified, a new stream record is written, which in turn triggers Lambda function and causes it to execute. This is access control to configure additional filtering and controls. Attacks information let us go to overview this is dashboard so this is the table which I created we can create additional tables for the selected one click delete table to delete it forever we can create a backup we can specify the table name and the backup name and create table backup and the time range we can select as 30 days or 90 days or in a year or all the time you can purchase the result capacity here to save on the costing with the discounts configure the preferences DAX is fully managed high volume in memory caching service for DynamoDB you can create a cluster there are no clusters no subnet groups parameter group the default one that is created these are the events let us go to the dashboard again as a final step when we don't want this table then you then you select and click delete table is deleted no sql db contains collection of key value pair documents this is sql versus no sql comparison sql databases are vertically scalable databases and no sql are horizontally scalable databases SQL databases are relational databases, RDBMS, and NoSQL or non-RDBMS or distributed database. In SQL, tables based with rows of data. In NoSQL, it's collection of documents with key value pairs. Examples of SQL are MySQL, Oracle, MS SQL. Examples of NoSQL are MongoDB, Redis, HBase. Amazon DynamoDB, etc. SQL is related data. In SQL, all the data is related, and in NoSQL, the data is unrelated. In SQL, SQL language is used, and in NoSQL, 
Jason like arguments are used. SQL is normalized and NoSQL is denormalized database. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services, section AWS Migration Hub. These are the products under migration AWS Application Discovery Service, Database Migration Service, Migration Hub, Server Migration Service, Snowball and snowball family aws migration hub simplify and accelerate migrations to the aws cloud so these are the products under migration aws migration hub provides a single location to track the progress of application migrations across multiple aws and partner solutions it allows you to choose aws and partner migration tools suitable to your business needs AWS Migration Hub provides a single place to monitor migrations in any AWS region where your migration tools are available. There is no additional cost for using Migration Hub. You pay only for the cost of the migration tools and AWS resources consumed. These are the benefits, centralized tracking, migration flexibility, and improved visibility. Supported services and tools are AWS Server Migration Service, AWS Data Migration Service, Atta Data, Atta Motion, and others. AWS Migration Hub features are it is simple and intuitive migration dashboard. Dashboard shows the latest status and metrics for your entire migration portfolio. This allows you to quickly understand the progress of your migrations and troubleshoot any issues that arise. Discovery summary shows how many servers, applications, agents, and connectors are there. Application migration tracking. AWS migration provides all application details in a central location. This allows you to track the status of all moving data. Here, time tracking app shows the servers which are inactive, in progress and the migration completed if any errors are there they'll be displayed here you can add the servers for migration you can choose the servers to migrate these are the migration tools integration this is aws management console these are the products under migration let us select migration hub AWS Migration Hub is not available in my region, so let me select US West. This is the dashboard of AWS Migration Hub. Migration Hub simplifies and accelerates discovery and migration from your data centers to the AWS cloud. Discover the databases and the servers using AWS Discovery Tools. Deploy AWS Discovery Tools. Migrate what is discovered using migration tools. And at every step, track the status of migrations. Let us check discover. AWS migration is in six steps. Choose and deploy the AWS discovery tools. View discover servers. Group servers as applications. These one to three steps are part of discovery. And migrate. Connect migration tools to the migration hub and migrate using connected migration tools. And finally, track status of migrations. Let us see discovery tools. AWS Discovery Connector and Discovery Agents are integrated with the Migration Hub. AWS Discovery Connector is used to collect system specification and performance information for all VMs in one vCenter and deploy an AWS Agentless Discovery Connector in each VMware vCenter. Deployment is simple and helps you quickly connect info about your VMs. Discovery Agent is used to collect specification and performance, processes and network dependencies. Install Discovery Agent on each of your VMs or physical servers. This is the prerequisite for Windows Agent. There are other discovery tools that are available to discover the resources in your data center. And some of these tools may not be currently integrated with the migration hub. This is dashboard. Discover servers, identify servers hosted in data centers. 
collect information, collect CPU, RAM utilization, and other information, and capture dependencies. Servers, we don't have any. If you have, then you can group them as an application. This shows applications, data collectors, tools, migration data. These are server migration tools. AWS Server Migration Service, Atta Data, Atta Motion, Cloud Endure, River Meadow Migration, and Database Migration Service, DMS. Let us download this connector. This is OEA file open with VirtualBox Manager. Discover agent for the Windows and Linux. There is no additional charge for the AWS Migration Hub. You only pay for the cost of migration tools you use and any resources being consumed on AWS. Getting started with AWS Migration Hub is simple. Set up and log into your AWS account, sign into the console, choose your method of migration, and start your migration. That's it. Application Discovery Service. This discovers on-premises server inventory and behavior. AWS Application Discovery Service help enterprise customers plan migration projects by gathering information about their on-premises data centers. The collected data is retained in encrypted format. You can export this data as a CSV file. These are the benefits. Reliable discovery for migration planning. Integrated with migration hub. Product data with encryption. Engage with migration experts. Database migration service. You can migrate your databases to AWS with minimal downtime. More than 90,000 databases have been migrated using AWS Database Migration Service. This DMS service helps you migrate databases to AWS quickly and securely. The source databases remain fully operational during the migration, minimizing downtime to applications that rely on the database. Pricing. You pay only for the compute resources used during the migration process and any additional log storage. On-demand instances let you pay for the database migration capacity by the hour with no long-term commitments. Server Migration Service. This is to migrate on-premises workloads to AWS. Server Migration Service, SMS, is an agentless service which makes it easier and faster for you to migrate thousands of on-premises workloads to AWS. These are the benefits. Snow Family. Snow Family is physical devices to migrate data into and out of AWS. Snow Family components are AWS Snowball, Snowball Edge, and Snowmobile. For this, you need to request a device through the AWS console and AWS will send it to your site to copy the data and return to AWS region. The AWS Snow family members are AWS Snowball, which is a petabyte scale data transfer service built around a secure suitcase sized device that moves data into and out of AWS cloud. AWS Snowball Edge. This is slightly larger capacity device. AWS Snowmobile. This can move up to 100 petabytes of data, which is equivalent to 1,250 snowball devices. This is 45 feet long shipping container. AWS Snowball storage capacity is 50 TB and 80 TB. Snowball Edge is 100 TB and Snowmobile is 100 petabytes. These are all the other features. Job length can vary from 90 days to 360 days. These Snow Family devices are owned and managed by the Amazon. Customers pay for the startup fees plus shipping service. This is Snowball.
Create a new data transfer job in the AWS Management Console. AWS will ship you one or more snowball appliances based on the amount of data. When the device arrives, connect the appliance to your network. Download the snowball client and job manifest from the console and run the client to connect and identify data transfer. Next, copy data to the snowball. Copying is done at a high speed and encrypted for security. Finally, it will be shipped back to the AWS to transfer the data to your resources. This is job created, shipped and the devices with the customer and in transit to AWS at AWS and job is completed. This is AWS Management Console. Select Snowball. So you click create a job. This is in simple six steps. You can plan your job. These are the scenarios. You have the data, you give the data to AWS and AWS will import to AWS S3 or export from Amazon S3 or third scenario, local compute and storage only. This is easy to understand wizard for using Snow Family services. Application discovery service. Database migration service. If you want to migrate to a different database engine, the AWS Schema Conversion Tool can help you automate the conversion tasks. Migration of database is in simple four steps. So this is the welcome step. Click Next. This is the information about replication instance. Select VPC. Some existing VPC. Multi availability zone, no publicly accessible, yes. These are the advanced options. Allocated storage 50 GB. Maintenance. Okay, let us go with the defaults. Click next. This is connecting source and target database endpoints. Source engine can be Aurora S3. MariaDB, MongoDB, MySQL, Oracle, etc. The target can be Aurora, Redshift, S3, MySQL, or any. You configure as per the need and finally create a task. This is AWS Schema Conversion Tool. New project, give a project name and the location of your database source database engine and target database engine. You can follow and use this conversion tool as per your business needs. These are some of the snapshots. Comparison of discovery connector and discovery agent. Discovery connector cannot discover physical servers. But discovery agent can discover physical servers. A discovery connector and discovery agent can discover virtual machines. Server migration service. Snow family. Comparison of snow family members. Snowball console. Thanks for watching. Hello, I am Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services, Section Security, Identity and Compliance. These are the products under Security, Identity and Compliance. At AWS, Cloud Security is the highest priority. All customers benefit from a data center and network architecture built to meet requirements of most security sensitive organizations. These are security, identity, and compliance products. AWS Artifact, AWS Certificate Manager, 
cloud directory directory service identity and access management iem aws organizations aws single sign on AWS organizations offer policy-based management for multiple AWS accounts. With organizations, you can create groups of accounts and then apply policies to those groups. Organizations enables you to centrally manage policies across multiple accounts. Let us sign into the console. Uh, search for organizations. This is AWS Organizations Console. Let us create an organization. In an organization, you will have a master account and member accounts. You create master account and invite other accounts to join your organization. AWS Organizations provides single player and centralized cost tracking. Let's you create and invite member accounts. Allows you to apply policy-based controls and simplify organization-wide management of AWS services. Once you create an organization, it cannot be deleted until all the members are deleted. Let's create. This is the account that is created. This is the tree view of organization and the members. There is one policy, full AWS access. Let us add an account. You can add an account by two ways. By inviting existing AWS account to join your organization or create an AWS account in this organization. Invite account. You enter the email or account ID you want to add to this organization. And then add some comments and then click invite. Second way to add an account to your organization is Create an account in this organization. Provide a name. Enter the email address and optionally IAM role information. And this account is created using the contact information address of the organization's master account. Create. This is member account that is created. And service control policies. And we have some default policy, full AWS access. This allows access to every operation. You can edit the policy here. And this is not attached to any. You can attach this policy to the master account or the member accounts. You can send invites from here as well. This is invitation dashboard, invite account. The same way, email or account ID and optionally comments and invite. These are some screenshots captured. Create organization. Adding members to the master account. Organization structure. In organization will have units, business units and the policies attached to it. There will be member accounts or the organizational units that will be under the organization. Policies are attached to the OUs and the organization itself. These are the two accounts and uh, this is master account. Let us move this account under master account. You can create an organizational unit from here. Let us move this. We have moved Sneha account to OU2. This organization helps in organizing all the accounts in an organization and applying the policies seamlessly across the organization. You can use the policy generator or copy an existing service control policy and customize as per your needs. Let us delete the organizations. Members must be removed. Let us move this. Delete. This member account also. Let us delete. Select this organization to remove.
AWS Single Sign-On is a cloud service that makes it easy to manage SSO access to multiple AWS accounts and business applications. It enables users to sign into user portal with existing corporate credentials and access all of their associated accounts and applications. You can create SAML 2.0 integrations and extend SSO access to any of your SAML enabled applications. Set up AWS organizations and then enable AWS SSO in the AWS Management Console. Connect your corporate Active Directory using AWS Directory Service. Grant users and groups SSO access to AWS accounts and business applications. And manage user permissions centrally. AWS Single Sign-On is under Security, Identity and Compliance. Select this. AWS SSO is easily integrated with common business applications like Box, Dropbox, GitLab, GitHub, Google Suite, Slack, Zoom and many other popular applications. Enable AWS SSO. So we have enabled AWS SSO. Next step is provide a placeholder to store your users and groups in directory. Then assign user access to AWS accounts and applications. Now users can sign into the user portal to access their assigned accounts and applications in one place. You can configure user access to AWS accounts, organizations, cloud applications, and any custom applications that support SAML 2.0 based identity federation. Connect AWS SSO with your AWS Microsoft Active Directory. Configure SSO access to your AWS accounts within your organization. Configure SSO access to your cloud applications. Configure AWS accounts, applications, Microsoft Active Directory to connect to AWS SSO. We'll take a demo on this in the coming sessions. AWS Directory Service. It helps you store information and manage access to resources. Amazon Cloud Directory enables you to build flexible cloud native directories for organizing hierarchies of data along multiple dimensions. With Cloud Directory, you can create directories for a variety of use cases. AWS Directory Service for Microsoft Active Directory, also known as AWS Microsoft AD. It enables your directory aware workloads and AWS resources to use managed Active Directory in the AWS Cloud. The Microsoft AD service is built on actual Microsoft Active Directory and doesn't require you to synchronize or replicate data from your existing AD to the cloud. You can use standard AD administration tools and take advantage of built-in Active Directory features such as group policy, trust, and single sign-on. Next, securely manage access to AWS services and resources with AWS Identity and Access Management. AWS IAM enables you to securely control access to AWS. Using IAM, you can create and manage AWS users and groups, use permissions to allow and deny their access to AWS resources. This is AWS Management Console and search for IAM. Please watch the session on IAM for more information. This is dashboard of IAM. Let us navigate IAM Console, Groups. You can create users and add to the groups for creating IAM roles. You can create policies, identity providers. You can use SAML or OpenID Connect, account settings.
AWS Secrets Manager helps you protect access to your applications, services, and IT resources. You can easily rotate, manage, and retrieve database credentials, API keys, and other secrets throughout their lifecycle. Amazon Guard Duty is intelligent threat detection to protect your AWS accounts and workloads. Search for Guard Duty. Continuously monitor your AWS environment for suspicious activity and generate findings. Analyze multiple data sources, including AWS CloudTrail events and VPC flow logs. And customize Guard Duty by adding your own threat list and trusted IPs. This is console of guard duty. Amazon Inspector enables you to analyze the behavior of your AWS resources and helps you identify potential security issues. Search for Inspector. Install AWS Agent on your EC2 instances. Run an assessment on your target. Review your findings and remediate security issues. Based on your organization requirement, you can configure this inspector. Amazon Messi Amazon Messi is a security service that helps classify and protect your sensitive and business critical content. Continuously monitor the data. Classify the data using machine learning based data classification. Automate complaints, detect unauthorized access, and avoid data leaks through customized alerts. Protect your data. Based on your organizational needs, you can utilize Massey service. Certificate Manager AWS Certificate Manager makes it easy to provision, manage, deploy SSL TLS certificates on the AWS platform. AWS Cloud HSM is cloud-based hardware security module and use your own encryption keys on the AWS Cloud. With Cloud HSM, you can manage your own encryption keys. This is console of Cloud HSM. You can create cluster. Cloud HSM enables you to square quickly by adding and removing HSM capacity on demand with no upfront cost. AWS Firewall Manager AWS Firewall Manager is a security management service that makes it easier to centrally configure and manage AWS WAF rules across your accounts and applications. You can easily roll out AWS Web Application Firewall rules WAF rules for your application load balancers, Amazon Cloud Friend distributions across accounts in AWS organizations. You can easily build firewall rules, create security policies, and enforce them across AWS infrastructure. AWS WAF is a web application firewall service that helps protect your web applications from common exploits that could affect app availability, compliance with security, and consume excessive resources. We are filtering with custom rules, block malicious requests, tune your rules and monitor traffic. AWS Shield provides expanded DDoS attack protection for your AWS resources. AWS Firewall Manager simplifies your WAF administration and maintenance tasks across multiple accounts and resources. AWS Artifact features a comprehensive list of access control documents relevant to complaints and security in the AWS Cloud. These are all various artifacts. ISO 27001-2013 certification. And these are those. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services. 
Section Application Integration AWS Step Functions Build distributed applications with AWS Step Functions using Visual Workflows. AWS Step Functions let you coordinate multiple AWS services into serverless workflows. Using Step Functions, you can design and run workflows that stitch together services such as AWS Lambda, Amazon ECS into feature-rich application. AWS Step Functions is under application integration. You build distributed applications with AWS Step Functions. The steps involved in building distributed applications configure, populate, run, and evolve. Step Functions count a state transition each time a step of your workflow is executed. You are charged for the total number of state transitions across all your state machines, including retries. Step functions under free tier includes 4000 state transitions per month. This is the web page of AWS Step Functions. These are the benefits. Build and update apps quickly, improve resiliency, Write less code as AWS Step Functions manage the logic of your application for you and implements basic primitives such as branching, parallel execution, and timeouts. This removes extra code that may be repeated in your microservices and functions. AWS Step Functions provide serverless orchestration for modern applications. Applications development is faster and more intuitive with step functions. These are the features workflow configuration, component reuse, state management, visual monitoring, high availability, automatic scaling, security, and pay per use. With AWS step functions, you pay for each transaction from one state to the next. Pricing we have seen, you pay only for what you use. You are charged based on the number of state transitions required to execute your application. These are the free offerings under free tier. Let us create a serverless workflow with AWS Step Functions and AWS Lambda. The workflow is created in seven steps. Step 1. Create a state machine. Step 2. Create AWS Identity and Access Management role. Step 3. Design a serverless workflow. Step 4. Create your AWS Lambda functions. Step 5. Populate your workflow. Step 6. Execute your workflow. Step 7. The final one. Don't forget to terminate your resources when they are not needed anymore. You create an AWS account and log into the AWS Management Console. This is AWS Management Console. Let us select Step Functions under Application Integration or search here. Select this. Let us take a demo on serverless workflow with AWS Step Functions and AWS Lambda. In this demo, we'll learn how to use AWS Step Functions to design and run a serverless workflow that coordinates multiple AWS Lambda functions. AWS Lambda is a compute service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. In the demo, we'll be using AWS Lambda functions to work with AWS Step Functions. Let us create a state machine. Let us get started. You can create a state machine from the scratch or from sample projects or templates, common step function templates. Let us create a state machine from the scratch. Give a name for IAM role, which defines permissions for your state machine executions. Select I will provide an IAM role ARN. Let us create an IAM role. IAM is under security, identity, and compliance. Select this. This is IAM identity and access management dashboard. 
let us check roles these are the existing roles let us create a new one create role AWS IAM is a web service that helps you securely control access to AWS resources. For the type of trusted entity, let us select AWS service, which allows EC2 instances and Lambda functions to call AWS services on your behalf. Let us select step functions, attached permission policies, AWS Lambda role, default policy for AWS Lambda service role. So let us click next to review. Let us give a name for the role. Purpose is to allow step functions to access AWS resources on your behalf. This is trusted entity and the policy applied is this. And let us create a role. This is created. Let us search for it as this one. Let us select this. This is the ARN, role ARN. Now we are in step three, design a serverless workflow. So we are designing a workflow in AWS step functions. Our workflow will call one AWS Lambda function to create support case, invoke another function to assign a case to support representative for resolution and so on. It will also pass data between Lambda functions to track the status of support case and as it is being worked on. For the role which were created, let us copy the ARN and paste here. Let us replace this code with Amazon States Language ASL. ASL is a JSON based structured language used to define your state machine. This state machine uses a series of task states to open, assign, and work on a support case. Then a choice state is used to determine if case can be closed or not. Two or more task states then close or escalate the support case as appropriate. Let us copy this code. This is ASL state machine definition. Let us replace this code with ASL code. We'll be replacing these resources later with Lambda functions. When we refreshed, step functions translate ASL state machine definition into a visual workflow. Start, open case, assign case, work on a case, if the case is resolved, close the case. If the case is not resolved, escalate the case. Fail and engage tied to support. Let us create a state machine. State machine is successfully created. I am role ARN is this. We created state machine. And the next step is create AWS Lambda functions. We'll create these functions. Let us open Lambda. In the previous step, we have created state machine. Now we can decide how we want it to perform. We can connect state machine to AWS Lambda functions or other services. We'll create simple Lambda functions that simulate various steps for handling support calls, such as assigning the case to a customer support representative. This is AWS Lambda console. AWS Lambda is serverless computing. It lets you run code without thinking about servers. You pay only for the compute time that you consume and there is no charge when your code is not running. Let us click on create a function. We have three ways, other from scratch, blueprints and AWS serverless application repository. Let us create a function from this scratch. Let us give a name. We will be creating these five functions. Let us copy this. And runtime, let it be node.js 6.1. Role. Role defines the permissions of our function. 
let us create a custom role it's asking our permissions to access AWS resources AWS Lambda uses an IAM role that grants your custom code permissions to access AWS resources IAM role is Lambda basic execution let us go with the default click allow click create function this is the function that is created let us modify the code of this let us delete open case function copy this code paste and save the changes like this we need to create four more functions next is assign case function create let us name it as assign case function runtime default role custom role allow create function yes this function is created let us change the code let us modify the code of this But this is runtime. Leave other parameters defaults. Let us click save. Go to functions. Create function. Create next function. Work on case function. Default runtime. Choose custom role. Permit allow. Create function. Let us modify the code. Copy this code. Save the function. Go to functions. Create next function. Close case function. Create a custom role. Allow. Create function. Modify the code, delete this, copy this code, paste here, save. The next function, escalate case function, uh, create custom role, hello. create function so successfully created so all the five functions are here okay now go back to step functions this is the state machine that is created click edit in this ASL state machine definition we need to replace resource names with relevant resource names. This is open a case. Let us select this. Done. The next assign case. Done. Next is work on case. Close case. Next escalate case. Yes, all the five functions we have updated. Click save. Now next step is execution. Our workflow is ready to be executed. A state machine execution is an instance of your workflow and occurs each time a step function state machine runs and performs its tasks. Each step function state machine can have multiple simultaneous executions which you can initiate from step functions console. Okay, we are ready. Let us start execution. So execution name is optional. So let us give this name. So let us start execution and we can watch the visual workflow. This is execution details. Input and the visual workflow is this. 
Step functions let you inspect each step of your workflow execution, including the inputs and outputs of each state. Let us click on each step to know the step details. Click next. So these are the step details. Escalate case. Okay, this is the workflow. This is execution event history. This is all about step functions. This is the code. This is the workflow. We have created a state machine and executed our workflow. So let us go back to our presentation. This is IAM console, roles, creating a role. Select the service, step functions, create a role. So the final step, naming the role and creating a role. Step function, step function is created. This is summary. This is state machine definition. State machines in step functions. So creating a function. Lambda functions. Okay. As a final step, we should terminate our resources. Delete the state machine, delete the lambda functions, and delete the IAM roles. Let us delete IAM roles. This is IAM console. This is the role we have. Click on delete role. Click yes. There are no roles here. Let us go to Lambda Management Console. So these five functions we have. Let us delete these. We have deleted all the functions. Finally, let us delete the state machine as well. Select this, delete, confirm it. The deletion is in process. It will take a couple of minutes. Yeah, it's deleted. State mission is deleted. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Sri from CBTU. CBTU presents a course on Amazon Web Services, section Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring and management service built for developers, sys operators, and IT managers. CloudWatch provides you with the data and actionable insights to monitor your applications, understand and respond to system-wide performance changes, optimize resource utilization, and get a unified view of operational health. CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics, and events, providing you with a unified view of AWS resources, applications, and services that run on AWS and on-premises servers. Collect metrics and logs from all your AWS resources, monitor infrastructure with visualized applications, and automatically respond to operational changes with CloudWatch events and auto-scaling, and analyze the data up to one-second metrics and archived data. This is AWS Management Console. Let us select CloudWatch. This is CloudWatch Dashboard. AWS CloudWatch monitors operational and performance metrics for all your AWS cloud resources and applications. Summary says we have 366 metrics available in our region. So alarm summary is below. We do not have any alarms. Let us create one. When you sign up for Amazon EC2, you're automatically registered for Amazon CloudWatch. 
and EC2 instances are automatically enabled for basic monitoring at no additional charge. As per the business need, you may enable CloudWatch detailed monitoring which gives metrics at one minute frequency that is chargeable. Let us create a billing alarm to receive email alerts whenever AWS charges exceed a threshold that we set. Let us click. The alarm preview shows the current expenditure incurring. And we can create a billing alarm to receive email alerts. The conditions are when my total AWS charges for the month exceed $100 send notifications to so let us say sneha in the additional settings treat missing data as ignore to maintain the alarm state on the right side preview you see the red line this is the threshold that we set when this blue line crosses this red mark that is hundred dollar threshold then alarm will trigger create an alarm this shows one alarm in sufficient state. This is the alarm. Let us see what's the reason. This is pending email confirmation. Okay, this is the alarm. Alarms invoke actions for sustained state changes only. Let us create another alarm. We got these many metrics to select. Let us select EC2 metrics. Let us quickly create an EC2 instance. Select EC2. So let us launch instance. Creating an Amazon EC2 instance is simple. Just follow this seven step wizard to create an instance. We are in step one. Let us select free tier eligible Windows Server, Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base. Select general purpose t2 dot micro instance type okay let us go with the default let us create one instance leave others default default storage for the root volume leave default so for now no tags security group permits rdp access to our windows server and the source is anywhere it's open it's warning us about the security which is open to the world. It's okay for now. So let us review. Click launch. So let us create a new key pair. Download the key pair as we need this to obtain the administrator password to log into the instance. Save this file. Launch instance. Instance is being launched. Let us see. It is provisioning it takes a minute or so for full provisioning and in the running status for us to use yeah this is ready let us check monitoring basic monitoring is enabled for our instance disk reads and disk writes network in and out bytes network packets in and out status check fails we don't have any CloudWatch alarms configured. Let us create an alarm. CloudWatch alarms can be configured to automatically notify whenever any metric data reaches the threshold that we set. The conditions, whenever average of CPU utilization is greater than or equals to say 75% for at least one consecutive period of five minutes, then take this action recover recover the instance stop this instance or terminate or reboot this instance let us say stop send notification to let us say we can specify the recipient on the right side we see the cpu utilization with the red line that is the threshold that we have set whenever this line is crossed this alarm is triggered create an alarm we can monitor this alarm in the CloudWatch dashboard. Let us click this. Here close. This is CPU utilization alarm which we have created. We have three alarm states. OK. OK is when the metric is within the defined threshold. And alarm state 
when the metric crossed the defined threshold. Insufficient data is alarm do not have enough data to determine the alarm state. On the billing alert, this is the one which were created. Events. AWS resources can generate events when their state changes. An event indicates a change in your AWS environment. AWS resources can generate events when their state changes. Say an Amazon instance change from pending to running state or an Amazon EC2 auto scaling generates events when it launches or terminates instances. When your resources change state, they automatically send events to the event stream. You can create rules that match selected events in the stream and route them to the targets to take action. The target processes events. Targets can include Amazon EC2 instances, AWS Lambda functions, Kinesis streams, ECS tasks, step functions, state machines, Amazon SNS topics, Amazon SQS queues, and built-in targets. A target receives events in JSON format. So we'll be creating rules. Rule matches the incoming events and routes them to the targets for processing. A single rule can route to multiple targets. CloudWatch events response process. Determine events of interest in the CloudWatch events stream. Create rules to select events of interest and specify the actions to take when rule matches an event. Create rule. This is event source. This is target. We can build or customize an event pattern or set a schedule to invoke targets. Let us say event pattern. Select all events. This pattern will match every single event sent to your account. This mostly includes information type of events. This generates high number of target invocations. Let us select events per service. Service name, let us say console sign in. Let us say service name auto scaling. Events. It can be specific like instance launch and terminate or AWS API call via CloudTrail. So let us say all events. We can edit this code manually. Let us see sample events. Okay, event source we have specified and let us select target to invoke when any event matches your event pattern. The target can be any of these. Let us say SNS topic and select uh, the existing one. Configure input for this event source. It can be matched event or part of the matched event or constant or input transformer. Let us say matched event. Configure details. Let us give a name. Let us create this rule. This rule is created. This rule we have created based on the pattern. We can create based on the schedule as well. We can create a rule by setting up a schedule to invoke targets. We have default event bus and default event bus accepts events from AWS services, put events API calls and other authorized accounts. We can start monitoring logs with Amazon CloudWatch logs. We need to install and configure CloudWatch logs agent to send your logs to CloudWatch. The agents can be installed on a new or running EC2 instances as well as through the cloud formation or chef. You can monitor log events as they are sent to the CloudWatch logs by creating metric filters. Metric filters turn log data into CloudWatch metrics for graphing and creating alarms. We can collect logs from Amazon EC2 instances and on-premises servers into CloudWatch logs. We can create a log group or export data to Amazon S3 or stream to AWS Lambda or Elasticsearch service. This is a log group. On any selected log groups, 
let us create a metric filter we can monitor and count specific terms and exact phrases for log events and associate results with a metric we can specify the specific term or the phrase in the log events to create a filter pattern we'll take a demo on this in another session this cloudwatch dashboard will give us a snapshot of alarm status if any alarm is triggered it will be highlighted acknowledge the alarm and necessary action need to be taken on that alarm these are the alarms running cloudwatch provides around 400 cloudwatch metrics let us see them the metrics are available for all these AWS products and services. As per the business need, you may select and configure the alarms and the events. That's all about the Amazon CloudWatch. Thanks for watching.